Well, good morning and oh, good afternoon and welcome to Sydney Parade for this much-anticipated Leinster Senior Cup Final sponsored by Skellic 618. Two sides performing for your entertainment today will be Clontarf and The Hills. And I'm joined in the commentary box today by Fintan McAllister. Fintan, good morning to you. Good afternoon. Morning, Craig. Great to be here. Looking forward to a good day's cricket. Well, it looks like the worst of the rain has passed and we've got a gap anyway, so hopefully we'll get started and hopefully we'll get a full game in. Yeah, I think there's been a few uh, games called off um, around around Dublin today, so hopefully we get a bit a good crowd down. Well, certainly the video you showed me of Malahide, more suitable for water polo than cricket. And uh, we're very fortunate here, after the three days during the week of the Inter-Provincial T20 Festival, won by the Northern Knights, we now return to the highlight of the Leinster Club game. And I see the umpires now at the middle. The Clontarf batsmen heading out. Well, I wouldn't say at any great pace, but they're on their way out. And the Hills, well, they're on the sideline with their last group huddle. We'd have seen a few of these players playing into the interprovincials during the week. It's a busy time for some cricketers. Non-stop cricket these days. It certainly is, yeah. Um, a lot of teams in, in Division 1 will have the, the weekend off this, this weekend, but um, yeah, we've got some fantastic players on side here today. Well, you see up on the screen in front of you the Clontarf side. Some names most people will recognise. PJ Moore, David Delaney, Fionn Hand, Robert Bob Forrest, Andrew Pointer, there's some good players in amongst that lot. And as you can see from your screen, well, the Hills won the toss, and unsurprisingly, they chose to bowl. There is the Hill side. And again, names galore. Mark Donegan, Murray Cummins, Cormac McLaughlin, Gavin, Nikolai Damsgaard. I'm looking forward to seeing him bat. I watched him down in the Mardike in the Interprovincial T20 competition, and uh, he took 14 off the opening over. He didn't last much longer than that, but by golly, he was exciting while he was in the middle. Have you come up against him? I played against him early on in the season in the T20s, and he, he certainly hits a big ball, particularly over the top, hitting yeah. straight. Just gets the levers out and, and gives it a whack. He also has the best figures for the Hills in this cup run. He took three for seven against Dublin University in the first round. And... Uh, for this first half of the game, would be more interested in his bowling than his batting. Well, the Hills have had their team photo taken. They're coming out to the middle. We had a delayed start because of the weather. And it's an amazing fact that we're only half an hour behind time. And there is a bit of sunshine. The wind will certainly dry out the ground. And we'll see how things go. There's no point in even trying to predict a final score or a good score on this wicket. We saw scores of... 180 in 20 overs, but we also saw sides bowled out for 78 as well, so you just don't know what you're going to get. Well, the opening pair for Clontarf, Owen Delaney, the captain, and Ryan Karuna Karan, and they'll be opening for Clontarf. The Hills. Starting with Sean McNichol. And as you say, it's it's amazing that we we haven't lost any overs so far on fair play to Dale and his team. Well, I know that during the week on, on Thursday, after the rain on Wednesday, he was here at quarter to six in the morning just to take the water off the covers. I tell you, some dedication. So we're underway. A little bit short and leg side for McNichol. And that puts Clontarf onto the board. That's the first one is signalled a wide. Our umpires today, Sereni Carpe and Sejay Nandakumar. <laughs> All right. I may not have both of the umpires' names correct. 
Just reading from Jess Sigan's most excellent program. He said that. Well, no, well, she's not only an expert with the technical stuff, he knows who the umpires are as well. Run off the ball, off the bat. Two on the board. Now, how, could, how could I not recognize Azim Ali Beg, one of the top umpires in Leinster? We seem to have a quite a northerly breeze at the moment, and that's behind the bowler. Flags are certainly fluttering at the moment, anyway. Karuna Karan, the left hander. Yeah, left hand, right hand combination here. But Nickel seems to be settling in well here for a stover. That one let go through to Donegan. Donegan back with the gloves on again. He, during the week in the Interprovincial Festival, the first game he was keeper, and then the second game he was a fielder. As Lorcan Tucker came in to the side. Yeah, fantastic cricketer, uh, Mark Donegan, and, and his game has come on leaps and bounds over the last year or two. Certainly you'd notice with his batting that he's, he seems... Um, more self-assured now. He has a bit more confidence in his in his ability. Big time, and he's got a lot more options now um, than he used to have, and he's he's really kicked on with his cricket. Well, not too much of a crowd here for the start of this game, but if you are in the area, come on down, but bring a raincoat or. Despite the appeal, the umpire decided very early on nothing was touched on that. Two on to the total. Signal to wide. It looks like a bit of pace in the wicket as well. That came through very quickly. Well, perhaps another reason for the Hills deciding to field first is not wanting to face Fionn Hand and David Delaney on a wicket that might be a bit quick. And I suppose the thought is that, as well as making the most of the bowling conditions now, if it dries out, it'll be easier to bat on in the second innings for the Hills. True, yeah, exactly. Well, that's the end of the first over. Safely negotiated, just four runs from it. But the good news is we do have play. We are underway. There's a good mixture of jumpers, training tops. We're just short a hoodie in the field at the moment. It's that breezy. Nolte it will be to open the bowling from the St John's end, often the preferred end for the quick bowlers, but today with this northerly breeze, you know, which do you want? Do you want the, the, the legendary Pembroke Ridge in your favour, or do you want the wind behind you? And, well, I'd say coming down the hill, but it's, it's not much of a hill here. Yeah, two sharp bowlers up front. Keen Nolte certainly bowls a heavy ball. Well, right up to the batsman with the first delivery. It is a bit windy here, so we do apologise if the picture shakes at all. Yeah. It is a bit breezy, but if the breeze keeps the rain away, we won't be too upset. Well, 
Oh, just getting that one started on the wrong line. It moved a... Well, it would have come back into the left-hander if it had been on the offside, but instead slipped down the leg side. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be a few nerves as well in the, in the final from both teams and just about settling yourself and getting into the game. And these first sort of 5-10 overs so vital as well. You might not win a cup final in the first few overs, but you might lose one. Clontarf will be keen to retain wickets through these first 10 overs. Just two fielders outside the circle at this stage. And unsurprisingly, one down at third man, down by the equipment shed. Yeah, and probably hard to see on the cameras there, but plenty of buzz coming around from the, the hillside in the field here. I think you'll hear plenty of clapping and encouragement. The clapping might be as much uh, to keep your hands warm as, as to encourage your bowler. It's a bit chilly out there today. And looking at the last time these two sides met in the final, 2005. One player still on show here today as well from that game. Wow. What's that? It's 28 years, uh, 18 years ago. Yeah, Owen Delaney. Wow. That's, that's some going to keep going for 18 years playing senior cricket. Yeah. He'd have been a mere pup last time then. Yeah, he must have been a teenager at that stage. Looking through the names there as well, some... Great characters in both teams. Well, that one just encouraging the bat to be held out there. And that's the end of the second over. Fine over two. Five for zero. And it's sort of, I don't know, it's like a boxing match where both sides seem to be sparring with each other at the start. Nobody taking on the bowlers, but the bowlers not. Are they pushing through yet? We're just trying to find their line and length. Well, there's the scenery for you. And as you can tell, there's a bit of everything up there. A little bit of blue sky, a little bit of dark cloud. But by and large, the cloud's white and perhaps high enough to keep the rain away. That one just played down into the gully. The fielder unable to take it cleanly at the first attempt. And the batsman came through for the single. And as you said, left hand, right hand combination. Plenty of movement in the field for the fielders anyway. Yeah, it always makes it a bit tougher for the, for the bowler to, to control their line. Only two runs from the bat so far, from the bat of Owen Delaney. But seven runs on the board. Yeah, with that wind around, it must be, must be hard to control. There's probably a bit of nerves here and there as well. Well, backing up. Not quite as sharp as the hills would like, but it didn't cost them any runs. They come through for another single. Direct hit might have been interesting there. Come on, come on, is very quick between the wickets. He's been around for a long time now. Plenty of experience. Well, that's a lovely shot. Good front foot movement, covering the ball entirely. But then again, McNichol won't mind. Another dot ball. Oh, 
not sure McNichol has a very nice action. He's generating a good bit of pace at the moment. And it's great to see, not only for the Hills and Leinster, but maybe pushing forward then, looking for further honours. Two slips and a gully in place for him. So obviously his captain has faith that he can find the edge as the hills search for this first breakthrough. Both uh, openers here have, have a good bit of gas behind them and you might see them come into play at some stage in the next couple of overs. Well, the early call was for two. They decide against it in the end, perhaps wisely. Good throw in. Well, Owen Delaney, as expected, top run scorer for Clontarf in this competition this year. Played in all three of the games that saw Clontarf reach the final. He'll be looking to add to that tally today. Keen Nolte now, one of three bowlers on the hillside, leading the wicket takers with just the five in the three games. Nicely played into the space, enough to let them get through for the single. that with a few games around Leinster being called off today, we'll either get very good viewing figures or we'll get a very good crowd down here to enjoy this Leinster Senior Cup final. Overpitched by Nolte on this occasion. One feels that if you're going to bowl that, that ball, the first few overs is the time to do it. You might get away with it then. Whereas if you try and do it towards the end of the innings, you know the batsman's going <coughs> to make the most of any, any delivery like that. And looking back on that uh, team from 2005 and the Clontarf side of... Bill Coughlin now with the, the coaching staff with Clontarf first team. Greg Mullins played in that as well. I've seen him floating around the ground here as well. Greg, of course, is also involved in the island over 40s. They took a team over to the UK and beat England, and I believe they're playing Wales in the next couple of weeks up in Merion. Could be an interesting game to go and pop in on. Oh! Well, there's our first boundary of the day. And Klontoff will be happy with the boundary. But nearly gave the bowler a chance. Beautiful shot there. Just a bit over pitched and straight back right down the ground for four runs. Well, the first boundary of the day. It was in the air. Nolte flung his hands up in a vain attempt to get there. But Karuna Karan, he'll be happy. Well, that's the end of the fourth over. The score has moved on 16 for naught. And you have to think, at the moment, the Clontarf sideline might be slightly more content, I won't even say happier, but more content at not having lost a wicket. And they're going along at four and over. It's a decent start. Big time, I think Clontarf would be very happy with this. Just get through that new ball, lose no wickets. Sorry. 
so often it's been shown, if you have wickets in hand going into those last 10 overs, you can really make a big difference to your total. does show the strength and depth in Leinster cricket. You have the Hills and Clontarf in the Leinster Senior Final. YMCA at top of the league. Leinster in the All-Ireland Final on the 12th against Warringstown. So plenty happening for Leinster cricket at the moment. Well, Donegan did very well just to get a hand on that. If anything gets past him, it's unlikely it's going to be stopped before the boundary. Did very well there, Mark Donegan, diving to his left. I think the Hills will probably be a bit disappointed just with the, with the start here with the extras. Again, that left-hand, right-hand combination might be proven a factor here. It's just not let the bowlers settle, really, is it? They've been taking these singles enough that the bowlers are having to adjust the whole time, and that's got to be tricky for them. Well, both men out of the circle at the moment. Long leg and third man. It's probably to be expected at this stage. Well, that's what you want your ring fielders to do. Back up your bowler. Another dot ball. Three in a row now. Yeah, and just on that left-hand, right-hand combination with someone like Owen Delaney there, he's fantastic at just picking gaps and running his quick singles. And Well, we're halfway through the power play. Five overs gone. Scores moved on to 18 for the loss of no wickets. And again, extras and Karuna Karen equal top scorers. We'll give him a few minutes to get his coat off. Good morning, Sean. Well, if that wind would drop now, beautiful sunshine basking. Sydney Parade. Still suggest you bring a jumper, a hoodie, and or a coat. Yeah, I made the mistake there. You have the beanie on. Should have brought mine with me. Good mix of clouds up there at the moment. One way you feel it could rain at any minute. But also plenty of blue patches of sky. And 
Let's just hope that the weather doesn't cause us to fall foul of Duckworth Lewis. Never the ideal way to settle a cup final. Well, I've seen a couple of games up the north, especially in the T20 competition, be decided by bowl outs. Has to be the least satisfactory way of finishing a game of cricket. Yeah, we've certainly had a, a tough month of, with the weather was. I can't ever remember it anyway in my playing time of July like this. Oh, what an awful and July. August, we had such a great May and now. June. Glorious May and June. That one just tucked off the hip there for one. It's a bread and butter for a left-hander, that shot. It's just a tuck, really, isn't it? Tuck, yeah, just get inside the line and drop it down there to... Well, that's the first time I've seen a bat come down with that sort of speed today. Delaney obviously deciding that was a delivery for him. Went straight to the fielder. Ends the over. The score has moved on to 20 for the loss of no wickets after six. But it's that loss of no wickets that Clonsarf would be happiest with. Yeah, they'll be delighted with that because they have some, um, <clears throat> they've got some serious batting um, coming to come as well. You look at the names there, David Delaney. I mean, he's certainly he's going to be a key man in this, in this game, you would think. John McNally. A few big hitters there, Robert Forrest, Fionn Hand. Oh, that's a sharp piece of fielding. Out at point. Bounced just in front of him. He got his hands down to it. Got both hands to it in one go. Definitely no run there, that was for sure. Yeah, Cormac, M Cormac McLaughlin there at a backward point. It's a super bit of fielding, and that just gives, gives the whole side a bit of a boost there. Just as importantly, stops Clumtar getting the boost of seeing the ball running away to the boundary. We have seen just that one boundary so far. Played by Karuna Karan. Back past Nolte when he was bowling. Sean McNichol now into his fourth over. And the question will be... When does his captain make a change? Well, that one's cracked through the offside, got between the two fielders, and it's beautifully picked up inside the line. Super piece of fielding there, just in front of the rope. A couple of runs saved there. That's a brilliant bit of field and a bit of weight on offer there. Didn't time it perfectly, but Went to the boundary, and Andy, I think that's Andy Kavanagh there. Leading by example. Still plenty of noise amongst the Hills fielders. sense that the two batsmen now feel that they've got themselves in and now they want to start scoring some runs and the bat's coming down a bit quicker it's following through a bit more yeah they certainly seem to be looking to go at it a bit more positive here but still showing the Respect for the good delivery. No, no point being mad about it yet. And with seven overs gone, the score has moved on to 23 without loss. Delaney on five. Karuna Karan, he's moved on to 11 now. He's had the majority of the strike. And the question now is, 
when as captain would you start thinking about making a change? Your, your opening bowlers haven't made the breakthrough you were hoping for. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be thinking about it soon enough. Um, still only 23 off, off the seven overs there, so. This, this is the score by over. And then when the wickets fall, I'll put it in there. That's just some note taking I've learned from Stephen Arkin. Clontarf players are looking to be this bit more positive. It could create opportunities for the Hills as well. Willing to take more of a risk to try and get some runs on the board. Well, that's Ryan Karuna Karan's second boundary. And neither one of them has been particularly convincing. They've both been in the air a little bit, given a bit of hope to the fielding side. But he got away with that one. Four more runs. Yeah, played a bit in the air, but it's a, it's a rapid outfield here and went straight to the boundary. Considering how much water it's taken on board, it's, it was amazingly quick how that one just skidded off the turf and ran away to the boundary. Just to show how dry it is, actually, I haven't seen a fielder with a cloth trying to dry the ball desperately for the bowler that you would have expected when you first came down here this morning. But it seems to have dried out quite well with this breeze. I couldn't believe it when I rocked up to it's all sunny in Sydney Parade here. Changing the field here now. Kind of a catching mid-off. Well, aerial again, but on this occasion, I think he deliberately lifted it, knowing that once he cleared the circle, there wasn't much else to stop it on its way to the boundary. A second boundary in this over. Yeah, it came just straight onto the legs there, and that's a beautiful shot there, timed really well. Thomas Rooney Murphy, the one doing the fetching, and that's all it was. Good comeback from the bowler. This one much fuller length. I like what the Hills have done here, being aggressive with the with the field here, with the mid off. Maybe seen a few shots go in the air and well, those of our viewers who also tune in for the Pembroke games will know that I have a bugbear about fielders sitting on the ring. And it's great to see Thomas uh, Mo uh, Rooney Murphy. He's a good five, seven metres inside the ring. And he's taking off, cutting off that single, but also, as you say, putting himself into a chance of a catch. And here's that four again, lifted in the air. That's the first of the two fours. And that one just slipped away once it had avoided the the fielder, but that's a lovely shot, just clipped off his legs, lifted over the ring, and that brought the score up to 31. An expensive over for the Hills. Yeah, and those couple of boundaries will definitely make him feel a bit more confident now, you know yourself in a final, just getting a couple of boundaries away, just gives you a great deal of confidence going forward. That's the first half hour of play done now. Well, my own 
personal view on that is A, watch the wicketkeeper, B, it was the fielders that went up, then the wicketkeeper, then the bowler, and you'd expect it normally to be the other way around. Yeah, it certainly looked like a close one, but I think the right call there and not out. First bit of excitement for the Hills fielders. First chance of a good appeal. A great appeal. Here it is here. Well, that swung back a long way, and he was well down the pitch. Again, coming off the inside edge of the bat. Yeah, it certainly looked close to the LB. But it did come back a long way, maybe going down the leg, maybe going over. Great to see the president of Cricket Leinster on the ground. Pat Bannon, a great man. He has a, a couple of articles on the Cricket Leinster website of what it's like being the president and detailing his time. My goodness, the man is watching an awful lot of cricket. Great the way he goes around to the different clubs and the different grounds, not just, uh, not just looking after Leinster. He's a fine president for Cricket Leinster. He's been fantastic. Well, the call was two very early on. It was fine leg who had to come up and get it in the end, but anything put round to just behind square. And they ran the first one so quickly they could get him for the second. Yeah, and that's on Delaney's game, is just picking gaps, running singles, running twos. Oh, misfield at point. And that means the ball is allowed to run away to the boundary. Not the end of the over that the Hills would have wanted, but exactly what Clontarf wanted. 37 without loss now after nine overs. I think Clontarf would be delighted with the start that they've made here. And here we do see our first change of bowling. Tenth over of the innings. Look hot here. It's coming on. You see here, he had his hands down for it, almost too close to his body. He'd have wanted a bit more space. But he went over the top of it, London Bridge style. And it ran away to the point boundary for four more onto the total. Yeah, just one of those awkward ones that bounces in front of you. Yeah, I just, uh, bowlers are never happy with it, but, but they realise that you're not doing it deliberately. Or if you are, he'll let you know about it in the bar later. <laughs> Pravesh Lakotia. He played in all three of the previous games, just picked up the one wicket. He's only bowled three overs before the final. Well, we're given that as a loosener. It was turned around the corner, just a single taken. Yeah, probably got away with that one there because pitch short, not on a deep square there. Again, it's sort of more, as much about the match situation and where we are in the match that saved the bowler there. Try, try bowling that one in the 43rd over. <coughs> well, catcher in close now on the offside, putting a bit of pressure on Delaney. Two fielders out, down at third, and down at the pavilion on the leg side. Not quite fine leg, wide fine leg, I suppose, well, well, wide long leg. Well, one of the Hills fielders just saying, settle in here now, 
And that's exactly what they want this bowler to do. Well, this one was a bit shorter. Delaney very quickly onto it. Didn't time it or get the power he wanted on it, but it's enough to get him two. And you'd almost say another one that the bowler got away with. Certainly, yeah, probably did. I think they'll probably be thinking about a deep square here soon enough. Just three off the over so far. It's given him an opportunity to get into his rhythm. At the end of at the end of ten overs, the score has moved on to forty for naught. We bid farewell to Finton for a while and welcome to the box for the first time this morning. Sean Hussey. Morning, Craig. Afternoon, Craig. Afternoon, everyone. Yeah, it's, uh, well, I, I was up early this morning and I wasn't expecting much cricket when I saw the rainfall outside, but what a wonderful job Dan McDonough and all the GM by Choice team have done here. And hopefully if the weather stays like this, there'll be a bigger crowd coming down. The Hills and Clontarf, two of the most well-supported teams in the province. We're going to see Tomas Rooney Murphy from the first, for the first time from the Wheelfield Road end. Slip in place, and again, that catcher close on the offside. Well, be that kind of wicket, that kind of weather, certainly, when a little bit of moisture on the pitch. Grounds had a lot of cricket during the week with the Interprovincial IP Festival. Well, you're talking about the moisture through to the pitch. I mean, I know the covers were on, but that means the pitch was sweating underneath. But uh, we saw a couple of deliveries from the opening spell where it really just seemed to shoot through quite quickly. Played into the leg side. And we'll pick up a boundary. Karatna. A little stray delivery from Rooney Murphy and it's a good shot. Clontarf have got off to a good start here. Well, Finton and myself were talking through the first eight or so overs just saying that Clontarf were looking to get through the new ball and, and just not lose too many wickets in that power play. Of course, we're outside the power play now. And Clontarf have achieved that. No wickets down. 44 on the board. This is a good opening stand. It's been steady. Just the four boundaries so far. Short delivery, but gets away with it. Rooney Murphy, and particularly having lost the toss, Clontarf, and been put into bat. You would have, from a Hills point of view, been expecting a few wickets. You didn't see that boundary earlier in the over. Just too straight from Rooney Murphy. So they'll be a little bit disappointed, the Hills. They haven't managed to break through yet. Tomas Rooney Murphy so often. A key player for the Hills with the ball in those middle overs. Tends to pick up wickets. Uh, they'll be hoping he can do so here. Seems to have been around forever for the Hills. And yet, as we were saying earlier, the last time these two met in a cup final. 2005. Owen Delaney, the only player to have played in that game and playing today. 
who's been an outstanding servant to Clontarf on Delaney. Just seem Rooney Murphy a little bit disappointed with the length he's balling. and just see him looking back down at that pitch. Particularly with the slip in play. I want to be pushing the ball across. Corrupt the can. Yeah, he seems to have been a little short in that over. Well, Granger makes his first over and he will find the length he wants. But he got away with a couple there. Yeah, just a one boundary from Tomas Rooney Murphy's opening over. Clontarf made a good start here after 11 overs. They're 44 without loss. And sunshine hits the ground. It's one of those four seasons in an hour stuff. I see a few brave souls on the wall wearing short sleeves or even a few pairs of shorts. Yeah, rather than the meat. Yeah, I think we may well be in the cold pocket of the ground down towards the nets here in Pembroke. And they're going to continue with Bavesh Lockett Coda. Doesn't tend to bowl an awful amount. I think the hills recognising it could well be a day for that slower pace, that kind of bowling. Keep her up to the stumps. Well, we saw it during the week with the interprovincial T20s that sometimes spin was the way to go. Just take the pace off. Make the batsman do the work. And again, it, it, it just looks like it out there, particularly on Delaney, just struggling to get his timing there. This is loose delivery you wouldn't normally expect maybe to find the gap, but doesn't seem to be coming on to the bat nicely at all. Yeah, that's a poor delivery, and he gets it away, Delaney. And it will race for four. Doesn't matter about the overnight rain. It's still a quick boundary, or a quick outfield. And Bavesh Lakota, he got away with a couple. Doesn't get away with that one. Fine shot by Delaney. Might just get him going. Yeah, sometimes just one shot like that, and suddenly everything clicks together for you as a batsman. Delaney will certainly be hoping that's the case. And you can see... That close catcher on the offside, still there, and in fact joined by another. They really are trying to close that gap to Delaney. Yeah, well, the field there, you want it pitched up. Still a touch short from Lakota. Because if he can get this full, may well cause Delaney a few issues. It seems like it's not the easiest ground to rotate the strikes on that. Not that sort of pitch. That's a fine shot. And that one's too full from Lakota. And Owen Delaney recognising, well, he may not be one of the first string bowlers, Lakota. So if it's there, he is going to hit him fine on drive. Two boundaries and three balls for Owen Delaney. Well, he heard of the expression of leading from the front. He has all the experience. Yeah, good running. That's a really good over from Clontarf. Be interesting to see if Lakota comes back for a third over after 12. Clont Long spells. I think Clont or the Hills rather will be looking for him to do a similar role here. Delaney spotting that one on length, pulling it out on the leg side. Keeps it to a single, though, with the fielding. Yeah, brilliant work by Andrew Kavanagh, I think it is there. He's a real live wire in the field for the Hills. Slip is coming out, maybe in response to that previous over where Rooney Murphy just didn't quite get his leg right to the left-hander. And being placed from slip into mid-wicket. Karuna Karan playing that one deftly onto the offside. Extra fielder on the leg side now, of course, with that slip moving out. In the air. That's a fine shot from Karuna Karan. 
Slightly over pitch from Tomas Rooney Murphy. And beautifully played down the ground. Well, the boundaries are starting to flow here from Clontarf out of the power play. Just seemed to not found the right line of length. That was a touch too full. I think they'll be disappointed, the Hills, especially having won that toss. Yeah, they'd have thought that the overhead conditions and the ground conditions would have been of assistance to the bowlers. And in fact, the trickiest situation for the batsmen. But they haven't managed to take advantage of that so far. There wasn't any extravagant move in, at the top of the innings. And that's the end of that second over from Tomas Rooney Murphy. Six from it. After 13 overs, Clontarf are 59 without loss. <coughs> well, I think you're right. I think there is a change of bowling coming on at the St. John's end now. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised we did see Pavesh Lakota in at that stage, maybe because they wanted to find a little bit of movement. There's that wonderful shot in the previous over on the charge from Karuna Karan. Well, it's Nikolai Damsgaard who's coming on at the St. John's end. He yeah. has best figures in this competition this year. Three for seven. How the Hills could do with that now. Absolutely. And a look at spin. But during the week, when it was on Tuesday, when it was slightly dry, we saw Matthew Humphreys, left armour for the Northern Knights, take five wickets. He spoke after the game about the assistance from the pitch. Just wonder with the rain we've had in the last five, six days, whether we'll see an awful lot of spin. And we're going to get a first look at it from Damgard. These two bats from now have passed the half century mark. They're on 59 for naught. Great opening partnership for Clontarf. Exactly what they would have wanted. Yeah, good start. Interesting, the mid-off is in the ring. Two in the deep on the leg side, a long on, and a deep forward square leg, and the man at deep cover. So a chance for Karuna Karan if he can go down the ground offside. Clontaffer in such a good position now. The sun is starting to come out. And imagine... Having done the hard work, they'll be thinking of a big total here. With plenty of batting still to come. We saw something similar during the week at that interprovincial T20. Different format, of course. In one of those games, Munster Reds were put in and ended up putting 180 on the board. Sort of backfired on the toss winning captain of the Northwest Warriors on that occasion. And perhaps the Hills, well. In the air, down the ground. Kian Nulty's not going to get there. There's a chase from. Uh, does really well in the end. Saves two runs for his side. But you can see immediately, first ball on to Laney faces a spin, looking to use his feet. Midoff was in the ring. Didn't quite get all of it. And picks up a couple. Uh, very good delivery. Good comeback from Dam Garden. I'm sure he'll enjoy the challenge. Not an easy time to come on as a spinner when a platform has been laid by the opening partnership. We're going to see the change in the field. Mid-off is being dropped out to long off. Mid-on is in the ring, so... I wonder is he tempted to go that way. Oh, beautiful delivery. Look to have got an extra bit of bounce. He's a tall man. Just four runs coming from the first over of spin of the day. 
Van Taff. They're in a good position. Strong opening partnership. 63 without loss after 14 overs. Well, you get the feeling that this is an important part, stage of the game now. The two openers for Clontarf, they've got themselves in, they've put down a good base. And they're going to be looking to take on the bowling a bit more now, just to up that run rate. Just wondering, can Tomas Rooney Murphy get his line and length right here? It would feel like it would be a pitch that he could trouble the batters on. Mid on the mid off her in the ring. We saw Karuna Karan go down the ground in the previous over. Stifled appeal. But that's when he's at his best, Tomas Rooney Murphy. Doesn't give you an inch. Not a beautiful delivery. Work for Kian Nolte again. Again, does really well. Saves another three runs for a side. That's five runs in the last seven or eight deliveries, but a beautiful delivery from Tomas Rooney Murphy. Well, he just cut the batsman in half there. Hands went straight to his head as he saw how close he was to getting the, the batsman on that occasion, but it ran away. And yes, great fielding by Kian Nolte. He's already proved his value as a fielder. <coughs> Stopping a couple going for boundaries. Again, good work by the Hales. It's Cormac McLaughlin, Gavin this time. And that's what they're going to need to do. They need to build the pressure that way. They can't do it through wickets yet. They'll be disappointed with their start, but this is still a crucial part of the game for them. Good change up. Really good from Tomas Rooney Murphy. Because you can see just with Karuna Karan there, he is trying to look to score. Both these batters will know they've got off to a good start. I want to cash in fully. Again, beautiful delivery. A lot fuller this time. Almost a Yorker length. It didn't come up at all. Sort of only came a couple of inches off the ground through to the keeper. That's often the thing with the very full delivery. Skids through to the keeper. Oh, again, much better over from Tomas Rooney Murphy. Well, that's what he's all about. The over just goes for a one. And we've reached the 15 over mark. Clontarf are 64 without loss. We're going to have another change in the commentary box. Craig Senior just stepping out. And I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Fintan McAllister. How are you going on, Fintan? Not too bad, Sean. Oh, what? I'm enjoying this uh, game of cricket here. What do you make of the start? Because I'm sure the Hills would have wanted a few early wickets having won the toss. Big time, especially with the when you look at the batters that, that are still to come in, there's some real power hitters there on that Clontarf side, so... Clontarf would be delighted with the start here. It's going to be damn guard again to continue. Beautiful shot, but good hand. And again, we've just seen that fielding go up a notch on the hill, so important at this stage. Yeah, there's been some, some great ground field in there, especially Keane Nolte's doing a, a great job there. The sun is starting to come out here at Sydney Parade. Good crowd down already, considering the early morning weather we've had. I'm expecting a bigger crowd later, so if you are in the area, 
These are two well supported sides. To see a change in the field for Delaney. That mid off goes back to long off. Kian Nulty. That's a really good line from Damgard. And seems to be more and more people coming down with a few games called off around the area. And great to see a, a lot of the, the youth, youth members of each club coming down, playing away in the nets. Just tucked into the leg side. It's two clubs you'll know well, Finton, from your time as a player, but also when you work with Cricket Leinster. Two sides with exciting young players as well. Yeah, two the great youth setups and um, a lot of talent um, in in their senior teams with, with the younger members. <coughs> and these two clubs, they've a real habit of getting to to finals, don't they? Well, particularly Clontarf, even in their bad years, they seem to go deep in competition. Similarly, the Hills, I mean, they'll be disappointed so far with their league performances down towards the bottom. But they got to the T20 final. They got to the Irish Cup semi-final. They're in the Skellig's 6-18. That's the Senior Cup final. That's a good over for Clontarf. Five singles coming from it. They're 69 without loss. Yeah, they've, had, they've both had great runs in, in, in the Cups, these two teams. And, um, yeah, the only thing I'll say, probably with their league form, is that, that the league is so tight. You know, a win or two can just... You could be second one week, and you lose a game, you could be not far from the bottom. So it's it's a really tight league. Brilliant that it's so competitive, though. And see... Rooney Murphy continue, often does ball long spells. He's so effective at this stage of a game, Tomas Rooney Murphy. Yeah, Tomas uh, Rooney Murphy, a brilliant competitor. He gives absolutely everything out there on the field. I think I heard you say it earlier on, he, he doesn't give you an inch. And Well, they'll be relishing this as well. The fact that the opening bowlers haven't quite got the hills off to the start they would have wanted. I mentioned they won the toss. That's a fine, fine shot by Karuna Karan down the ground where we saw him go. Pass mid off this time, pass mid on. And that will frustrate Tomas Rooney Murphy. Yeah, and he's hit one or two in the air, and but he's just. Uh, He's got great time and he's he's hitting a few boundaries here. It's a beautiful shot straight down the ground. Good work in the deep. Oh, just be one. Just going back to the league. Mention how competitive it is. You must be happy with your own side, Malahide. Yeah, going well at the moment now. We're we're top of the table, but it's only only by a point. Um, but it is. It's just it's it's so competitive and it's great because every every game seems to mean mean something when you play it. Tucked into the leg side, on Delaney immediately wants to Keon Nulty, steaming in from fine leg. Yeah, really good running by Owen Delaney. Immediately called to. Put Kian Nulty under pressure. Brilliant running. Yeah, that's really on, on Delaney's game. Just just hitting gaps, picking singles, and he's absolutely rapid between the wickets. Well, Clontarf will be really happy with the start they've made. To seem to have everything in control at the moment. But they'll know the job is nowhere near yet done. Appeal did make a noise on Delaney saying it's his tie pad. Umpire Azamali unmoved. Yeah, it looked like a good decision. Bowler and keeper didn't seem to go too much, go, go up too much. But on Delaney, how many, how many finals has he played in over the years? Even looking back the last time they met in 2005 and he was playing, the only player on show here today who was playing in that as well. Full, be a dot ball, 
10, the Rooney Murphy over, goes for eight. Clontarf 77 without loss after 17 overs. We well, mentioned I was down watching Clontarf and Marion last Saturday, and it was a uh, like before appeal on John Anderson at a game at a crucial stage with John Anderson in and Marion with a chance of winning. And it did appear that it hit the inside edge of John Anderson's bat going for a, a sweep. The appeal was made, the umpire gave it, and then Owen Delaney very, very sportingly turned it down, realised that there may have been an error made, and in the end, Clontarf still won the game, but it was at a very crucial part of the game. So it just shows you the type of character Owen, Owen Delaney is. Yeah, he actually done that against us in Malahide in the first round of this competition as well, and so without a doubt, he plays it in the right spirit. Well, if I'm not mistaken, Fintan, you won the Cricket Leinster Spirit of Cricket Award a few years ago. Did yeah, won it, won it, won it twice now, last year. So I think Colin Delaney may well be going for your crown. So you'll have to watch out at the Cricket Leinster uh, dinner. <laughs> you definitely be getting my vote anyway. Oh, well, Owen Delaney be going to the Cricket Leinster dinner as the Skelligs 618 Men's Senior Cup champion. All remains to be seen. Captain in the side. I just think that line from Damgard is really effective. Just bringing the ball back in on the angle, looking for any sort of spin. Especially with his height. We saw one in the previous over. Just spit off a length. Yeah, he's a handy operator and he, he looks to get through his overs really quickly and I love that from, from spin bowlers. I think it's one thing, Clontarf, just to have to try and do. Just keep going here. And I know the temptation may be there to press on the accelerator. You mentioned some of the batting to come. They're well ahead of the game at the moment, having lost the toss. Nice piece of bowling. That's the threat. Two runs coming from that over. Clontarf, 79 without loss after 18. If you were back in the dressing room, down in the middle order, what would you be thinking and hoping your openers would do here now? Particularly in a cup final, we, you know that saying, runs on the board in the cup final. Having made such a good start, Clontarf, if you were coming in at four or five at Clontarf, what would your message be to the, to the two openers? Well, I suppose with no wickets lost, I mean, you take it through to 20, I suppose, see where you are, and then you, you probably do look to, to shift gears up a bit, just with the, with the batting lineup that they have to come, Clontarf. They've got a fantastic batting lineup with, with big hitters. And I mean, the longer this goes on, the more them lads can probably play that as a, nearly a, a T20 game coming in. Just seen a few running repairs to the boots. I think it's Tomas Rooney Murphy there. You mentioned some of the young stars and the young players. Mark Donegan's made a real impression at interprovincial level this year. I'm sure he's a, a player you'll know an awful lot about. A wicket keeper as well. Yeah, part of the keepers' union. But his game, we were only saying it earlier on, has really come on like leaps and bounds. He takes his cricket very seriously and he's a hard worker. And it's great to see him getting opportunities now in the interprovincial. Short ball in the air from Owen Delaney. There's a slip from Andy Kavanagh and it goes for four. And there'll be a little bit of disgust on Tomas Rooney Murphy, but might have been off camera. Andy Kavanagh had a big slip. And disappointing for Clontarf. Yeah, just disappointing a, for the Hills, rather. Just a slip out there from Andy Kavanagh, and I'd say um, Owen Delaney's heart was in his mouth there for a while. Well, he's normally such a brilliant fielder, Andy Kavanagh. I just wondered, did he run in a little bit too much? And then in the end, slipped as he's tried to make his way back. But Delaney has a life, and that's not going to please Tomas Rooney Murphy. Slash outside the off stump. As you can see, short ball picked up really well by Owen Delaney, but straight at the man. There you can see, just before that, a slip. And you can see him kick the ground of frustration, Andy Kavanagh. Right, 
just on the wicket keepers, Mark Donegan, there's so much competition, particularly if you just look at some of the keepers in the Leinster game at international level. Neil Rocks got called back into the Ireland team, although he is left out of the squad for the India series, which was a bit of a surprise. But you've got Lorcan Tucker, Stephen Doheny, Mark Donegan. Some might say you've uh, inspired a generation there, Fint. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that now, but <laughs> there's some fantastic keepers around at the moment. Down the ground again. Any time that Rooney Murphy's looked to overpitch, Karuna Karan has gone back over his head. Well, there's been one wide of mid-off, one wide of mid-on. This one straight back over the bowler's head. You can actually hear the cheers from the Clontarf dugout. I think they'll be enjoying what they've seen. Two boundaries in this Rooney Murphy over. Good comeback. Full and straight. You can just see Tomas Rooney Murphy is ticking a little bit. And he's really taking advantage of, I suppose, hitting down the ground as well. His head position is fantastic when he, when he plays those shots. Final ball of the 19th over. It's an over that's gone for nine. And it goes for 13. Well, it might be a bit premature on that. Indeed, I am. A little bit of moisture. Gets a couple. 11 off that Tomas Rooney over. He's not a happy camper. He's had issues with his studs. There was a chance in that over. And Karuna Karan moves to 44. Owen Delaney to 39. And Clontarf and 90 without loss after 19. By the looks of it as well, it looks like Clontarf have looked to shift gears here a bit. There's a couple more aggressive attacking shots coming into their game. Well, just, just while I have you, Finton, on the art of wicket keeping, we're going to see spin again. I wonder what, if we will see spin from the Wellfield Road end. No delay, he just plays it down the ground. There was a lot said during the men's ashes about Johnny Bairstow, where you've got that a batter who can keep, or going for someone like Ben Folks, who's a wicket keeper and bats a little bit. There's lots of different ways to do it, of course. But how important is having a strong wicket keeper to a side? I think it's massive, especially, I mean, maybe in T20. Not as much. You'd probably go for a more a, a batter keeper than a than a keeper batter. But I mean, when you look at someone like Ben Folks, when he comes into a team, what he what he what he does and the things he can pull off, I'd always say get the best keeper in the team. There's the wicket keepers union <laughs> coming into effect. Good running from. Um, had to stick over them. Yeah. <laughs> A beautiful piece of bowling again. That's the delivery he's looking for all the time. Yeah, but the standard of wicket keeping now in Leinster has, has really improved massively. You look at two, two of the keepers on show here today, Mark Donegan, PJ Moore. These two are rambling towards a century opening stand. Very comfortable. Owen Delaney, just that little bit of difficulty in that previous over when Andy Kavanagh slipped. Down guard, clever bowling. Saw Delaney coming, banged it into the pitch. Four runs coming from the 20th over. Clontarf in a really strong position and 94 without loss. couple of overs there. Yeah, Clontarf would be absolutely delighted with this. These two have done a brilliant job for their side and they've, they've looked to kick it on a gear now. Well, 20 overs gone, 94 without loss. You'd have thought Clontarf had won the toss. <laughs> yeah, they've done a brilliant job. The one thing I will say though is the, the wicket looks an absolute belter here that, that Dale has prepared. 
saw on Thursday, the Leinster Lightning chase down a big total. It's just, it's a, it seems to be a pitch that once you get yourself in, that you need to survive those first few overs or deliveries. But Karuna, Karan and Delaney, they're looking very comfortable at the moment. You just get the feeling from his action and his, his demeanour almost that Rooney Murphy begrudges giving away runs. We were only saying that earlier myself and Sean, he's, he's a real competitor. Yeah. You know when you play against him, played against uh, Tomas a lot and you always know you're in for a fight when you're playing against him. A very smart cricketer as well. He captained the, the hills for, for a number of years as well. Plenty of experience and knowledge. At the moment, he's trying to use all of that against these opening batsmen. They just want to pry one of these out. But certainly the ground is an absolute credit. Dale McDonough. Put a lot of work in, not only throughout the whole season, but in the last couple of days, just ensuring that Pembroke's hosting cricket when many other grounds are unable to. Yeah, the place looks an absolute picture here today. <laughs> not quite the burnt outfield we'd like to see from a great summer, but uh, lush and green at the moment, but still quick outfield. Yeah, and I just can't get over how, how dry it was at the start of the outfield. I yeah. couldn't believe when we turned up and said, right, to, well, we're going to be playing a full game. This breeze has done a great job in drying the ground. We just hope that the clouds stay away long enough. Keep the precipitation to a minimum. Neatly taken single, Karuna Karan. He moves on to 48 now. Delaney not that far behind on 42. That's the end of the 21st over. And the score now 97 without loss. Looks like Keen Nulty coming back on. Well, the Hills have used five bowlers now. Rooney Murphy, he's bowled five. Damsgaard has bowled four, and now we see the return of Kian Nolte. This will be his fifth over. Bit of bounce and a Nolte announcing his return. It looked like he just bended his back a bit more there and just reminding the batsman he's there. Really important for the hills here as well. Just with you know twenty overs gone and haven't taken a wicket yet, just important that they stick to their line and length and don't go searching for wickets. Well, that'd be the trouble now if they try to buy a wicket at this stage. I mean, it's already going to be a high-priced wicket. Another up his shot. Karuna Karan moving on to forty-nine. A little bit aerial. Well, 
there haven't been too many chances given by either batsman at this stage. We were saying early on in his innings that Karuna Karan had sort of gone a bit aerial in searching for boundaries. But uh, on this occasion, he's fought his way through that and now going well for him. Cut away down to third. And this time they take on the fielder. Pick up two. And perhaps the first signs that the Clontarf bats now decided they are definitely, they have the 100 partnership. And they're definitely well and truly in and starting to look for additional runs. The 50 came up in 13 overs. And here we are in the 22nd. It's only taken a further eight overs to reach the 100. A gradual acceleration rather than an explosion by the batsman. Well, right now, if we could keep that right now, sunshine, blue sky, you'd almost think it was summertime. Yeah, true. It might be nearly, nearly time to take off the beanie. <laughs> <laughs> nearly. Delaney chasing that one a little bit. End of the over. 100 on the board after 22 mm. overs. But 100 up for no wickets. Clontarf, they must be absolutely delighted and they couldn't ask for, for probably better than this. This is the time when I think being a number three batsman is, is the strangest of jobs because on some occasions, here we are going into the 23rd over and the opening partnership still there. And on other days, you're in second ball of the match. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it'll be it'll be an interesting one because you have to keep your concentration for the for the whole time. The only thing, though, the way these lads have batted, it's kind of given whoever's coming in to a license to to go at it. And the longer this goes on, the longer you're going to see it turn into a nearly T20 kind of cricket. Well, that's it. Just the 37 overs remaining. Uh, 27 overs. Uh, 27 overs remaining. Well, there's an unusual one. The umpire showing left arm over, coming on, and the sight screen being moved, and the bowler seemed to be checking his run up from the other side of the wicket. Jonathan Tall it is now coming on at the nursery end. It's been a while waiting for his introduction. Just a few overs to drinks now. At which stage... Sean Hussey will be joined in the commentary box by Jim Bennett. And we all look forward to that uh, entertainment. And Jim, what a man. Some man for one man. Well, Karuna Karan, he's on 49. He's faced 66 balls, but he has done an absolutely super job for his side. They've reached 100 without loss. Little bit uppish. Jonathan Tall, another one who played in all three of the games leading up to this final. Nicely fielded. And that's his half century. It's come in 67 deliveries and his entire team on the sideline. And this crowd, which has grown to a decent size. It's been a fantastic knock, and it'll be interesting to see now that he has his 50. Is he going to try and kick on a bit more now and up the gears? Does that, does that give him the license to thrill now? It's been a super knock, and his, particularly down the ground, he actually he makes it look quite easy. It's a hard, great head position. And yet you'd, you'd still say that neither, neither batsman's really given a chance. It's not like the hills have missed opportunities. Yeah, you're right there. Two of them have just batted really well. He punches that one up to long on. Takes the single. I tell you, those lads pushing that sight screen, they're going to be busy if these two keep rotating the strike like this. 
Yeah, and I think the Hills will be looking forward to the drinks break just to just to regroup and, and get themselves together because you never know, a couple of quick wickets can change something very quickly, particularly in a final. Well, the one thing they won't want to let happen is just for the game to drift. But as you say, drinks not that far away now. 14 balls, although the drinks players may prefer tea and coffee rather than an orange squash at this stage. Bowl of soup, perhaps. It's not the warmest day out there. Well, certainly not down here in the commentary box. Another punch up to Long on. Another single. And again, it's just looking a bit easy for Clontarf at the moment. Yeah, they haven't had to do anything too much out of the, out of the ordinary here. But it will be interesting when that ring spray comes along, what, what way they're going to bat after, after they come out. Are they going to take it as a T20 and, and really start to motor on? Well, what they've been really good at doing this over is avoiding the fielders in the ring, pushing it out to the boundary. Not going too big, but making sure that they can take those singles and take them handily. Five from the over. 105 without loss. And now just two overs to go until drinks. Again, five off the over, but just five singles. Nothing out of the ordinary. Not trying to push too much. Nolte to bowl. Once again from the St. John's end. Yeah, probably been the quickest of the bowlers here today as well. Balls a heavy, sharp, short ball. Well, that one ran out quite quickly to McNichol. But the bats were making sure they could take the single. And doing so, and again, it's this left hand, right hand combination. That there's been no let up in it, no wickets down. Yeah, and the one thing that's been really impressive is the way they've ran between the wickets. Well, two noises there, inside of the bat, onto the pad. Yeah, they both seem to be both very quick between the wickets. Yeah, yeah. and trust each other as well. They obviously yeah. batted with each other a fair bit this season. Well, Adrian Birrell used to always say, you never have a run out when you have two hairs or you have two tortoises. And when you have a hair and a tortoise together, that's when the run out comes. <laughs> well, he went short with that delivery. Didn't get as high as he wanted it to. There is a fielder out there, keeps it to a single. But you could see the intent from Delaney. Still words of encouragement between the fielders for their bowlers. And they are just... Again, well set field. Nolte going a bit shorter than perhaps in his opening spell. But not causing any more problems. Any questions the hills have asked so far, Clontarf have had the answers for, that's for sure. They turn down the chance of the overthrow. I suppose one thing about running the first one that quickly is it takes you a long time to stop again. <laughs> turn and get going. Yeah, they're running so well, and just those, those little drops into the offside here and, and taking our quick single, they make a huge difference in a game. Make a huge difference to the score when you add them all up. Not only that, it's infuriating for a bowler. You bowl a really good ball, the batsman just keeps it out and still gets a single. So, 24 gone. One more. 109. And again, we've been saying it for 24 overs now. 109 without loss. We have one over now into the drinks break. And as Fintan was saying, 
I think the Hills will be looking forward to the drinks break more than Clontarf. I think Clontarf will quite happily keep going. Yeah, I think it's just that they'll be looking forward to it. Just gives them a time to regroup, start working on a plan. I'm sure Andy Cavanaugh will just be telling his players, just just keep going with what we're doing. Just need to stick to a line in length and don't go searching for any wickets. Because you do, you never know. Two or three quick ones in here could could really change the game. Well, the run rate just over four. So it's not like the Clontarf batsmen have run away with this game. But with the likes of David Delaney, Fionn Hand, Robert Forrest to come in, I think we could be could be in for some exciting cricket and, and boundary hitting if they if they get it right here today. Well, good use of footwork from Delaney. Punches it down to the long on. Jonathan Tool second over. Just three runs came off his first over. Oh, five runs came off his first over. And looks like Murray comes there. Is it a short mid off there? So working towards some plan. Well, there may have been a plan but I'm sure it didn't involve bowling that one that short. Free hit out to the leg side. The fielder was there, it only cost a single, but if you're gonna bring the fielder in, bowl to your field. Look at that very straight fielder on the offside. Jonathan Tool going around the wicket, despite where his run-up starts, through and around. Score is Nelson. Everybody on the Clontar sideline now, and undoubtedly with one foot off the ground and one hand waving in the air and one eye twitching. That's well bowled. Don't know if you saw him coming down the track there and just threw it in a bit quicker on the legs. That's the sort of run we were talking about earlier as being infuriating. However, it sees Owen Delaney through to his half century. It's taken him 75 balls. It yeah, been a really composed knock that. Hasn't given a chance. Been rapid between the wickets. How about it? Another nice thing about this partnership as they reach drinks with the score on 112 for no wicket. And the nice thing about this partnership is they're about even. It's not like one of them is hitting all the runs and the other one is hanging around. Yeah, they've both done a fantastic job. So there we are at the drinks break. We'll make a change in the commentary box now and we'll welcome our special guest, Jim Bennett. And he'll be joined by Sean Hussey. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. And Finton, players are going to take a well-earned drink. And while drinks is going on, delighted to say, I'm a former Cricket Leinster president of last year. Jim Bennett joins me. How are you getting on, Jim? Grand, thanks, Sean. It'd be a bit better if I had a few Clontarf wickets down, but we can't have everything. Just in case anyone doesn't know, Jim, you're a, a big supporter of the Hills. But as you say, Clontarf got off to a really good start. All the bowlers wickedless so far. The spin of Damgard was impressive. Um, though hasn't picked up the wicket. Having won the toss to Hills, they would have been hoping to have had a few of the Clontarf batters back in the hut by now. They would indeed, yeah. And, and uh, early on, the batters weren't doing that much damage. You know, they were very, very conservative for a while. But then they started to pick up four balls, you know, so with a share of extras as well. So it's... Um, I mean, the one possible chance at the boundary where Andy Kavanaugh went in to catch it and slipped. But uh, Clontarf had batted very, very well. Very composed, very you know, positive batting, good running between the wickets. So, you know, you have to hold out your hands and say, yeah, fair play to them. Yeah, with Stanley Delaney reaching his 50, as well as Karuna Karan. So a good start from Clontarf. It's been an interesting summer weather-wise, Jim, particularly in the... 
the last month or so, the wettest July on record we've ever had. I suppose you've been bringing your rain jacket to most of the grounds. Everywhere, and we're amazed. I mean, I, as I was coming out of the house this morning, Griffith Avenue was underwater, was flooded. We've just seen photographs of railway, literally only across the road from here. It looks like Venice. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and here we are. Uh, fantastic um, drainage on the ground here. It's great credit to the ground staff at Pembroke. And again, we saw it during the week. We saw a cricket Tuesday, we saw a cricket Thursday, horrific rain on Wednesday, and rain all morning, and look, at, we're, we're, we're watching cricket, which is tremendous. Absolutely, and a big crowd building here as well. A lot of familiar faces. Hopefully as that weather gets better and more and more people come out, a lot of games around the province are already abandoned for the day. So... If you are without a game and looking for something to do, definitely call in to Pembroke, Clontarf and the Hills. Two very well-supported teams. Always have been. Always have been. Have, have very, very loyal supporters that, and on good days and bad days. You know, there are very few fair-weather supporters in either club. They'll always, they'll always come out and, uh, you know, there'll be interesting discussions between his north side teams and all the rest of it one Fingal one Dublin three um, you know there might be a small bit of edge but uh, you know it's uh, a friendly rivalry let's say absolutely what it's all about and I'm sure Clontarf think it's a long way out to Scaries whenever they have to go and I'm sure the Hills think it's a long way back into Clontarf for the trip as well oh well, yeah I mean last year if you remember um, we won the toss for the, the T20, where, the, where it was rained off here and Clontarf had to come out to the hills. Well, you think they were going to the North Pole. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but it was a fantastic... You know, it was possibly the biggest crowd I've seen at a domestic game in years. Tremendous game, played in great spirit by the two teams. Clontarf, very, very well supported. Under the, it was a great game, a great occasion. So, uh, no, we always look forward to Clontarf. It's a fantastic, fantastic club. And it's a great rivalry. So, you know, that's, that's the way things have to be. You know, friendly rivalry, played properly, played hard, and then celebrate after one way or another. And they've got some real young talent in their lineup, Clan Tarf, and even players playing with their second eleven. Oh, they have they've but they've consistently I say over thirty years from the time of John Lyons onwards, they've done brilliant work at youth level. Uh, I mean at the minute we'll say you have Aaron McGeehan coming through, you have John McNally coming through, you have the two of Derek Vincent's lads. Now that's four from memory. Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure there are more, and their parents will probably be ringing me up uh, to complain. Uh, but I'm, from memory, so but they've always and they've always given them a chance. You know that they, they don't have a sense that they're going to be isolated on the seconds or thirds. That they, they're, if they're good enough, they're 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 played on the firsts. No, they have a fantastic fantastic setup. All you have to go down on a Friday night to Clontarf, and you can hardly see the field with the number of people that are there uh, playing and enjoying themselves. It's, it's a great club. And, you know, they saw the future very early on, that you have to look after youth. And by looking after the youth, you're also looking after families. Absolutely, and so many historic names. And you can actually just see in your shot, Bill Coughlin and Andrew Pointer, there just chatting with the two players, two former great really of Clontarf. Andrew Pointer still very much playing. Yeah, and Bill was in Belvedere. My lads were in Belvedere with Bill, so they would have played along with Bill. And I can remember Bill as an under-13 who got 35 uh, every time. Bill was never out one season, just wasn't out at all. Uh, matured into a very, very fine senior cricketer. And Andrew Pointer then has done great work, both as player and as coach. Now, it was, he would be ho obviously hoping to get a full game in today because he's down to play with Clontarf seconds tomorrow. Uh, so, But again, had, has had a great career. And, you know, fair play to him that he's still putting it in uh, for cricket and for his club. And the two things about them is they were both big game players as well. I remember Andrew Pointer making the sensational century in an Irish Cup final against Merion in 2013. Bill Coughlin as well at the top of the order for many years with Clontarf. Yeah, always came to the party. And Bill, Bill nearly always got runs out in the vineyard because I have recollections of taking more balls out of the wood. Uh, loved, loved the vineyard. It was one of his favourite grounds. And uh, no, fine cricketer. Had, had, a, had a great career, you know. Would possibly a little bit unlucky in terms of international mm. recognition. But, you know, um, life and jobs and family commitments and so on, you know. But uh, fine cricketer. And, I mean, Andrew, Andrew Pointer has made a, a great career out of, you know, out of cricket. And only very, very richly deserved because of the commitment that he's shown to the game. Well, it looks like the players are going to make their way back out. I think a lot of players actually tend to play well out in the vineyard, Jim, just because of how well 
how well treated they are at them. I think the Scones could uh, have something to say as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, if that was true, you'd hope that they'd get no runs in the second innings, that they'd be full <laughs> to the gills. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't have. No, the, the vineyard is a great ground. I mean, I've always said this, that's the way heaven will going to be, yeah. except that the opposition wouldn't have as many runs as they've been getting <laughs> for the last while. Yeah, absolutely. And the, clan, uh, the Hills players just having a huddle, and you'd be hoping from their point of view that they'll come out with a little bit of more impetus after the drinks break. Maybe just take away from the concentration of Delaney and Karuna. Yeah, you'd hope, yeah. I don't, there's a little bit of, at one sense, you know, hoping that things will happen as this thing from making them happen. A little bit of that. But, I mean, you can see now they're bringing Sean McNichol back on from this end. Uh, and, uh, you know, Nikolai was, the, was, was bowling well and bowling with, with great control. And very much part of the strategy is going to be the 20 overs that Jonathan Tall and Nikolai will bowl. Now... You know, you'd hope that they wouldn't just re restrict the runs. You'd hope to take wickets as well. Yeah, and from a Hills point of view, they'd be hoping that if they could get one, it might well be difficult to come out and start on this wicket. You see these two very Clon much set at the moment. But Clontarf are, were always a side that batted the whole way down. Always. You never had Clontarf. You could have eight wickets down and a fella come in and get 100 batting at number nine. Uh, so they bat the whole way down. So it's it's uh, the next five or six overs are going to be crucial. So Sean McNichol from the St. John's end of the ground. Maybe hoping just the hills. Can they find a little spark here? Big crowd building now around the clubhouse. The sun is starting to make an appearance. And I believe there's a Cricket Leinster patrons lunch. At, at two o'clock, yeah. And the lads are making sure that, I, that they're going to have it all eaten before I get there. Now hopefully by the time you get down there, Jim, you might have a couple of hills wickets. With, with any bit of luck. Interesting enough now that they have uh, Sean McNichol on, but without a slip. Yeah, and I think that's just the position with Clontarf being with, um, still with the opener still there very much. The Hills haven't picked up any wickets. The Hills can't really look to attack because the game could then get away from them. Yeah, it's keeping the four balls out of it now that you really have to be. You know, so we're kind of gone defensive. Short ball in the air. And four, and exactly what I said you didn't want. Yeah, loose delivery from McNichol and a good shot by Alan Delaney. And the Hills just have to be careful here because this game could well and truly run away from them in the next five or six hours. But it's one of the great days, Jim, in the cricket lens to Fantastic. Calvary. It was always looked forward to. And, you know, times have changed a little bit, you know, with... Um, Domestic commitments and and uh, you know, but it was always a great day. It was a day to look forward to. Where it was closed day, so the players came around from the other clubs. You had a chance to have a chat and a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, or a drink, along with lads that you'd played against. It was always a fantastic day. And, and it, Pembroke is so accessible that people will come to the ground. You know, I mean, we've hosted a few finals, and uh, you know, you'd have a good representation of Fingal, but you mightn't have that many. Would come on. We see drink driving laws as well. You know that that you, you can no longer you know be carried out of the ground late in the evening. You, you're, you're supposed to respect the law. That's better. Yeah, big crowd here for the Skellig Six Eighteen Men Senior Cup Final between Clontarf and the Hills, live from Sydney Parade in Pembroke, a ground that's seen a lot of cricket during the week with the interprovincials. You were here, Jim, during the week. I was. I saw the saw the four games. It was I saw fantastic cricket. Leinster Lightning were very very good on both days because I had seen them in Cork and they weren't very good. But they were very good this week, particularly good against the Knights on the Thursday. Played into the leg side. Early call of two from Karuna Karamba. That's Andy Kavanagh there. Or sorry, Cormac McLaughlin Gavin rather who attacked the ball well. So seven runs from the over after. The drinks break. And the thing with Andy Cavan is doing here, he's almost playing a couple of his trump cards here in search of a wicket. Top ball Better. to end. Seven runs from that over after 26. Clontarf for 120 without loss. Andy Cavan is a young captain, Jim. Yeah, and good lad. Captain the T20 team last year and did very, very well. We won that. And uh, interesting, you know, he's very committed, very enthusiastic. Um, has a good spirit among the lads, you know, that they, they just don't play together, they socialise in that, so, which, which is a crucial part of, of team bonding. So he's, he's very, very good. Fine fielder, you know, 
decent bowler, good bat, so and a good all round lad, good club member. So it's 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 great that you you need people willing to take on the captaincy. It's 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 not an easy role nowadays because of all the things that you have to contend with, uh, and you can see even now there's he's getting plenty of advice with regard to bowlers and field placing and everything else. And there's three of my fans have just passed now to barrack me as I was trying to think collect my thoughts. Three of your many fans, Jim. You're, you're uh, uh, very much a fan's favourite down here. Your hands must be sore from all the waving and shaking. In the air. And over mid off. Four runs. And it's gone all the way indeed. It's a wonderful shot, tossed up, and he's not been afraid to go down the ground this time. Mid off is in the circle. And Clontarf may well put the foot down. Now we're putting the fielder back on the boundary. Goes leg side. And that's swept for four. Wonderful shot. So Clontarf, safe in the knowledge with plenty of batting to come. These two have done an awful lot of the hard work. May well be time to cash in. Swept for four. Tall under a bit of pressure. 10 from 2. Now you're just wondering where the wicket is going to come for the Hills. Having won the toss, as Vinton McAllister said a little bit earlier, it does look like a good wicket. It does seem like, as they always are in Pembroke, they're going to have to be inventive here, you think, the Hills are going to have to try and build pressure, maybe the old school, attritional way. Yeah, and it's just, just not happening at the minute. You, know, you have 10 off the first two balls, you're, you're on the back foot immediately. Tossed up this time, a little bit slower. You can see Karuna Karan check his shot. Tossed up again, full toss, just played down the ground. Damage already done in this over from... Karuna Karan doesn't need to do anything overly excessive. It's a strange thing, a final. You're never out of it. You can see what the Hills are trying to be a little bit inventive there. You can see Murray Cummins in the eye line of Owen Delaney. Tall coming left arm through and around. So a bit of work for those on the side screens. Uses his feet and he push feet very well. back down the ground. So 27 overs have gone here in Sydney Parade. It's very much Clontarf in the ascendancy, 132 without loss. The Moss back at this end. As you can see, a wonderful shot in the previous over. Mid-off was in the circle. So very little risk. Goes all the way for six. As signalled by the fans in the crowd. And then this one, a little bit flatter and beautifully swept. Man at cow corner had no chance. Got to see Tomas Rooney Murphy. Someone who is normally really effective for Clontarf. Or for the Hills, rather. Bowls in long spells. The six overs, a little bit expensive from his point of view. A little bit expensive, yeah. No, uh, Tomas is a great honour. Tomas was in, played in large yesterday. Uh, for the MCC, uh, took a wicket and it was a great day for him, great day for him, great day for his family, you know, for a great Fingal family. And uh, uh, on Friday night, there's a commemorative game for his granddad. It would have been his granddad, Thomas, Tom Murphy would have been 100. So it's, uh, so, you know, now, Tomas, in fairness, has been very, very unlucky. He had two good shouts for LB and, uh, you know, there was a, a, a caught where, where Andy slipped on the way in. So, you know, but that's, it doesn't just say that in the scorebook. It only actually gives the scores that you concede. But uh, you'd hope now this time for, now he also was having a bit of problem with his runners. He, he's, he takes 11 and a half, just as a matter of interest. So to be looking for somebody who had wore 11 and a half shoes, they couldn't find those either. So it, it's all woe at the minute for the Hills. Early call at two, work for Court McLaughlin Gavin. Karuna Karan's going to take on the arm. And it's really good running. 
You mentioned Tom Murphy there to come over to the game. You might just talk a little bit about that, Jim. Yes, uh, Tom Murphy would have been 100 on that day. He died just uh, just after his uh, 98th or 99th birthday. Played cricket from the, the late 1930s. Uh, he told me the first ball he ever faced, he downs the sub, he hit for six. <laughs> ah, beautiful delivery from well Rooney bold. Murphy. Well D bowled. Don again up to the stumps as well, might just yeah. be an added factor. Yeah, and Tom then, he got three more fours in that knock. He got 18 the first time he ever played cricket. And he played cricket. He's the oldest man we reckon to play senior cricket, 69 against uh, Terenio. That's going to take some beating as well, isn't it? It will, yeah, 69, yeah. Martin Russell was 62 when he made his debut uh, down in the hills, or down in Cork. We only had 10 players. Uh, and Martin got two not out. He would ask me to remember the not out. Uh, but that's the great Tom Murphy. And then his family would be... Joe would be known as Big Bird, Deirdre, Angela, Thomas, uh, John, who's in South Africa. And if I forget one of them, I'll be shot. Uh, so I think, I think I got them all in that. And of course, the great Michael Murphy, who won the Bookman Cup on four or five occasions. And thanks very much to Jerry Siggins, who's around the corner, who gave that nod so that I can now go back to Fingal without getting arrested. <laughs> Jerry Siggins looking after you, Jim. And Josephine, whose son is playing here today, Keen, Keen Nulty. So I think I've got them all in that. about a fantastic cricket man, a fantastic cricket family. And he told me to remember, always when I give a speech, to mention the man who won 22 Fingal medals. And who was that? Tom Murphy. <laughs> and when's that game taking place? Friday, at 5 o'clock. It's 100 balls in inch, North County's ground. Ticket only. There should be a wonderful crowd there. Hopefully the weather plays its part. Oh, lucky again from Rooney Murphy. Oh, well, hard luck. Well, he's bowled with no luck today. Another one. It's gone for four. And nearly finds the stumps. Runs given. And it's not going to do anything to his humour, Rooney Murphy. So you get a few drops of rain here. But it'll be a real celebration of all good about Fingal cricket. Everything at uh, Fingal cricket. Uh, the, the Fingal strength in the Fingal cricket are the families and it's fantastic that we, today for example there's three of Tom's grandsons out there or two, uh, three of them out there today Tomas Keane and Nathan uh, and it's it's tremendous to see the continuity punched, punched for a single another good over for Clontarf the rain is just starting to fall here so no doubt these two will be keeping an eye on that everyone just ducking for cover Looking at the clouds, it's going may well be one of those afternoons. See a few people going inside. 28 overs gone. Clontarf are 140 without loss. It's going to be Jonathan Hall again, the spin. We'll have one more over. Of course, it's... Sean Hussey here joined alongside you by former Cricket Leinster President Jim Bennett. In the air, down the ground, and short of the man, damn guard down there. So Karuna Karan has threatened to go down the ground on occasion, has found the boundary that time to short of the man and long on. Slight delay as the side screens are moved in the back. As I say, that rain just picking up off camera. Delaney down the ground, but straight to that man on the bounce. Right Murray Cummins. Murray, yeah. Changing the field, so the hills are going to try and tempt Delaney. Long off coming into the circle. So the scoring chances if he does elect to go down the ground offside. Uses his feet, full toss, and finds the man in the deep. Just had a present from Ger Siggins, the history of O'Connell schools, uh, a distinguished CBS. I, I get all sorts of memorabilia. There's three deliveries left in this, the 29th over. Going to let you go 
I did this over at Jim and enjoy the Cricket Leinster patrons' lunch. Well, I'm looking forward to it, Sean. Yeah, I had a very small breakfast. A reverse sweep. Really good shot from Karuna Karan. Work to do for Bavesh Lakota. He's not going to get there. And the boundaries are flowing for Clontarf. Really good shot. Beautiful shot. Well, Jim, when you're having your cup of tea and your scone inside, just remember us here in the cold. I, I'll be thinking about you, Sean. Yeah, it'll, it'll be something that might distract me briefly. Karuna Karan moves to 80. It's been a wonderful innings from him. He's really put the foot on the accelerator. It's going to be a tight Out. single, but it's well run in the end. It's been a feature of these two. 29 overs gone, Clontarf for 148 without loss. And my thanks to Jim Bennett. Thanks very much, Sean. Bye-bye now and take care. We might hear from Jim a little bit later as he goes off to enjoy the Cricket Leinster patrons lunch taking place here in Pembroke this afternoon. Again, the rain is just spitting from the sky slightly. It would be a bit of a concern for the umpires if it starts to get any heavier only may appear to be a passing shower as we look over the clubhouse there is some bluer skies mixed with lots of heavier clouds and I'm joined in the commentary box by Craig Senior it's all going Clontarf's way at the moment and that's the 150 partnership for the opening wicket Wonderful stuff from Delaney and Karuna Karan. And the hills look flat. And Clontarf and Delaney and Karuna Karan are taking full advantage. Well, the first 50 came up in the 13th over. The 100 came up in the 22nd. <coughs> and the 150 in the 29th. You can see there's a bit of acceleration here by Clontarf. Put into bat by the hills. Well, and it's probably going... Well, better than they could have hoped for. Yeah, in a really strong position. In this, the Skellig 618 men's senior cup final between Clontarf and the Hills. The programme, which is available on the ground, is also available on the Cricket Leinster website. Those of you watching at home, if you want to have a look at the programme, Jessigan's prepared publication, and as expected, full of facts and figures. Clontarf looking to join Phoenix on 15 wins in the Cricket Leinster Men's Senior Cup. Pembroke on 13. So Clontarf looking to knock Phoenix off the perch. Short ball pulled leg side. Work to do in the deep, and he does well. It's Nathan Rooney down there. I thought the square leg umpire did particularly well there to get out of the way of that one. Hit straight at him. A field of covering behind, save the boundary. Chance for Andy Kavanagh, but that's really good running from Karuna Karan. As I mentioned an over ago, it has been the feature. So clever. They struggled early on. Once they've got into their groove, these two, the running between the wickets has been superb. They put the pressure back on the hills. And they're in cruise control here. Well, that's exactly the right phrase for that. Cruise control. Pitched up down the ground. And Tomas Rooney Murphy throws it back in frustration. And that's not necessarily at Owen Delaney, but just about... His luck today, he's bowled eight overs, none for 47. 20 overs to go in the Clontarf innings, having lost a toss earlier this morning. They're 154 without loss. Well, Clontarf making the most of having been put into bat. Lovely reverse sweep earlier on. Bit of invention coming into it now. 
Well, as Sean said, 20 overs to go. Do you think that there'll be any change in the approach from the batsman now? Is it a T20 we're looking at from here on in? Yeah, I think Finton said that a little bit earlier. I think it is, particularly, as we've mentioned, people are probably sick of it, the long batting line-up to come. And these two in a really good position. On Delaney, he's a very clever cricketer, has been around and very experienced. I'm sure he may well be thinking, I might bat through here for the next while, just to ensure safe and steady passing. And Karuna Karan looks like he's had a license. Goes leg side just short of the man at mid wicket. It's Tomas Rooney Murphy himself. Well, again, it was nice to see. As soon as he stopped that ball, he waved to the umpire to show he hadn't taken and wasn't claiming a catch. Leg side sweep. Fielder out in the deep. Got the likes of John McNally, David Delaney, PJ Moore, Fionn Hand. Cronier, the professional, Robert Forrest. So plenty of batting for Clontarf. Left-handers in there with right-handers, so it's not going to get any easier for the Hills. They need to find a way of stemming the flow. Down the ground. Good shot. Work to do for Damgard. Does well. There's a few games taking place around the grounds that haven't fallen yet to the rain. My M twos are playing Pembroke up the road, Greystones twos and turn your threes. But there are plenty of games that have fallen to the weather. That's a wonderful shot from Karuna Karan. Work to do for McNichol. And they'll pick up another couple. So if you are in the area, maybe your game's been abandoned. Get down here. The weather stays fine. Could be looking at a big chase for the hills a little bit later. Umpire having to chase his hat across the ground as the breeze picks up again. But there is an expanse of blue sky. In the air. This one's in the air. And it's going to go safe. Well, he's had that happen a couple of times. Karuna Garan, a little pat on the back from Jonathan Tall. When you're on 85, you can afford that little bit of luck. Didn't get anywhere near that, but landed safely. 31 overs gone. Five runs from that over. Tariff 159 without loss. You can see that one just landing short of Rooney Murphy. And again, immediately see his left hand telling the umpire, no, it didn't carry. Oh, and that's not going to make him feel any better, Tomas Rooney Murphy. He's had a little bit of everything off his bowling. Again, Karuna Karan gets a stroke of luck, moves into the 90s. Well, we saw Rooney Murphy at the end of his previous over throwing the ball back to the wicketkeeper with a hint of frustration about him. Well, that sort of delivery isn't going to do anything to help his mood. When it's not your day... <coughs> That's the way his body language is showing at the moment. Could also change with just one delivery. Well, these two couldn't possibly have pictured themselves in this position now. Well, that could have rattled into the stumps. It could have done anything, really. And you can see the bowler. Well, if looks could kill. Played into the deep for Delaney. I think the thing the Hills have to understand is they still have batting themselves. Mark Donegan, who's been in good form for the Leinster Lightning. Cormac McLaughlin, Gavin. Experienced player in the club game and indeed into provincially. Nikolai Damgard made a wonderful 100 in the T20 semi-final against Merriam. In rapid time, 
slow a ball in the air again, doesn't quite carry. Tomas Rooney Murphy throws his hands out as if to say, well, what more can we do? He's delving deep into his box of tricks in the hope of creating some sort of opportunity for the Hills. But at the moment, Rooney Murphy is experiencing more frustration than elation. Goes through for a bye. Oh, Rooney Murphy, he's gone for 54. And this is the last ball of his ninth. And that is the end of the over. 167, no wickets down. Thomas Rooney Murphy, well, no wicket, 54 runs from his nine overs. And these batsmen are just easing themselves through this innings. Jonathan Tool now from the nursery end. A strange delivery all round. High full toss. Smack back through the bowler's outstretched hands, but only goes for a single. Bowler will feel he might have got a hand to that. The batsman will feel he should have put it away for six. As it is just a, another run on to the total. Well, that's a lovely shot. Hit down towards the pavilion in towards that patron's lunch where the sponsor, Skellic 618, is on centre stage. There'll be a few people enjoying that lunch today. Yeah, they've just been a, a welcome, really. Well, that wonderful shot, two away from a century. In the air, and again, doesn't carry to the man in the deep. Well, he's played beautifully at times, Kuruna Karan, but he has had a stroke of luck. One away, though from a century and after that steady slow start at the beginning when they were going along and around four and over he's now very close to hitting a runner ball <coughs> at this time it's Delaney takes on Jonathan Tool goes down the ground slight misfield saved the boundary did McNichol but they take Two for that, and that'll take Delaney on to 70, and he'll, he'll face the fifth ball of this Jonathan Tool over. Yeah, they look to be putting the foot down to Clone Tarf, realising that with the batting to come, just treat this like a T20. Wow. And that's not going to help matters. Interesting to see what they call. It's going to be four. It's a judge to be off the bat of on Delaney. He'll take it. When it's not going your way, it's not going your way. And that's the feeling the Hills must be having at this stage. They would have been delighted at winning the toss. And it's, I mean, on a family fortune sort of thing, you could have asked 100 captains what they would have done this morning if they'd won the toss. And I'd say 99 of them at least would have said bowl first. Yeah, a really good running there. And there's a lot of gloom, gloom looks on the... Hills faces, but that's such clever cricket. Two boundaries in that over. Jonathan Tall has been a little bit expensive. Here's the one that went leg side towards the patron's lunch. You can see it going all the way. Lamb shank and cricket ball, please. And then this one just tickled down the leg side. Very difficult for Mark Donegan, no chance. Well, he's going to meet Tomas Rooney Murphy to bowl out. There's been a touch unlucky today. Normally so reliable for the Hills. Yeah, 
Good delivery to start his final over. There seems to be a, a weariness about him now. Bowling his 10th over. His first over, of course, was back in the 11th. <coughs> He's bowled from both ends now. And he hasn't really had the luck with him. Short ball pulled into the deep. It's a poor delivery from Tomas Rooney Murphy. And Clarence Harf are going to go through the gears. And the Hills are going to have to find an answer because they could well be out of this game at the halfway stage. Too easy for Delaney. And another one. Owen Delaney. Wonderful shot. He moves into the 80s. And the Hills just have no answer. Back to back boundaries. Well, it's hard to see how the Hills can change this around. That's well bowled. Really good from Rooney Murphy. A great work by Mark Donegan behind the stumps. That must be one of the most difficult balls for a keeper to take that one almost on the half volley, really full of length. He's standing up to the stumps. Margin of error, zero. Strong shot down the ground, straight to the fielder. Good comeback this from Rooney Murphy. He'll be really disappointed. Well, how his figures are feel like he's bowled better than that. He's had a few chances. Go a right few. A little bit unlucky with inside edges. Just missing the stumps. That's the final ball of his day. And that is not going to make him any better. Work for Bavesh Lakota to do. Who does really well. Tomas Rooney Murphy takes his cap straight away. Giving us boys. Very difficult for Mark Donegan. Ten runs from that over. Clontarf. Now 192 without loss. Here are the boundaries from earlier in the over. Poor delivery that one in truth from Rooney Murphy. Good shot by Delaney. Well, he found the open space with that one. This one, slightly squarer for him. Came round a little bit more. But again, far enough away from that fielder. <coughs> and that was the two fours in that over. Rooney Murphy walks away after his 10 overs, having conceded 62 runs. And he must be feeling a little hard done by. He had a few balls that were lifted into space that he couldn't quite get a fielder under. He had inside edges. But by and large, these two have looked very assured. Karuna Karan now, he's on 99. There's going to be a change of bowling. Andy Kavanagh. The leg spin. Ideally, probably wouldn't want to have been bowling today, but such is the pressure. Um, doesn't quite get to the century this time. Karuna Karan will be just waiting to get that delivery. Just needs that single. Oh, stays on it again. Well... I was speaking with Joe Siggins earlier. He says that this batsman, Englishman by birth, but Irish heritage. And he's come over to Ireland now to further his cricket career. Well, there it is. He's going to go to his, to his 100 in style. What a knock from Ryan Karuna Karan. His teammates are up on his feet. Sensational stuff in the cup final. To deliver when a side needed it the most. A wonderful century. 103 from 104 deliveries. And he may well kick on for even more. Well, there could be no nicer feeling than reaching three figures in a cup final. Had a quiet start to the season. 
But he certainly has made his mark on this game. Took the hills. Well, it took Plantar for all that. 22 overs to reach three figures. It's only taken them another 13 to double that. Straight out Murray Commons. <coughs> it's our stop and there it is, 200 run, opening stand, brought up with the final delivery of the 35th over. Clontarf looks set for a big score, well in excess of 300. Well, this one just on the leg side, and the batsman just paddling it round the corner. And this is a super way to bring up your ton. But it's been a super knock from start to finish and a super partnership from these two. 200 runs on the board now for Clontarf. It's hard to believe that they were put into that. They've done such a good job here. It's been, it's been unbelievable. And I think we're going to see some fireworks to come still with that batting lineup as well. Well, there are 15 overs to go. 10 wickets in hand. And it will be Damsgaard coming on now for the 36th over. Seven bowlers used by the Hills. And still no breakthrough for them. Well, we can say it's a wonderful batting track, but still, you have to do the business when you're out there. And these two certainly have. Full toss from the bowler, put away by Delaney. He's not going to miss out on that sort of delivery at this stage. He's already into the 80s, up to 88 now. Now the eye is well in, and they just seem to be hitting milestones. Yeah. Well, these two sides met in the Premier League earlier this year, and the Hills actually came out on top by six wickets. Well, there you go. Finally, the breakthrough comes. Damgard puts one up there. And Delaney, well, he was looking for the big boundary. And all he did was find the fielder. But what a partnership. 204 for the first wicket. And as we say, they're going to be chasing runs now. That's for sure. But Delaney departs for 88. And I would imagine it's probably going to be PJ Moore coming to the crease next. Well... As we've all been saying, there's such strength in the Clontarf batting. It's almost, who do you want to send out time? Yeah, PJ Moore, if he gets going here, this could, this could be really exciting. Well, good round of applause for Delaney. Captain Delaney leaves the field, 88 to his name, but more importantly, 204 for his team. Great partnership, but the first wicket falls. And here it comes. Just almost gave himself too much room onto the shot. And you see all the Hills players. Well, there was a bit of anxiousness as it was in the air, but they took the opportunity when it was given to them. Yeah, probably more. Just, a, I suppose, a sigh of relief, really. And here is that catch right in front of us here at the commentator's end. And that was safe. And unlike Pat Cummins, he kept the ball off the ground. Damsgaard makes the breakthrough. As finally a wicket falls. And you're quite right, PJ Moore it is who's come out. If 
PJ Moore gets going here. And any total is really on the cards. A destructive batsman. Bit of sunshine again. It's beautiful when the sun comes out. It really is. Four seasons in an hour here at Sydney Parade today. I think if I was fielding, I'd probably have three jumpers and a raincoat on. <laughs> As I say, the national dress of Dublin these days seems to be uh, shorts and a puffer jacket. <laughs> and invest in a good brolly. Yeah, absolutely. Good ball from Damsgaard. Just getting a nice bit of bounce into the keeper's hands. Ends the over and a successful over at last for the Hills. Well, again, it's amazing how a wicket will just perk up a fielding side. Gives them a chance. Let's them think that the next one might not be too far away. That one just drops short of mid-wicket. I haven't looked at the stats, but surely that must be the highest opening partnership in a in a final. Well, that's a smart bit of work from Donegan. You'll see on the replay. He's got the stumping. The ball came through. That's a fantastic bit of work by Mark Donegan. And you know what? He was the only player on the pitch who realised he'd got him until they looked out at the umpire, the finger went up, and then the rest of his team celebrated. But he was off to his bowler straight he, away obviously just a bit of a foot slip and Mark Donegan great reactions with the bails and that is that's a big wicket again now we've got two new batsmen in at the crease and they, they have to get themselves going again back foot just dragged out of his crease he went down to play the shot the back foot came forward and Donegan with a very smart piece of work I mean once again you were talking with Sean earlier about how many good quality wicket keepers there are in Leinster at the moment. Yeah, and he's certainly up there with the best of them. Two down then with 206 on the board. Well, one brings two, they say, and it certainly has in this innings. And keeping the, the left hand, right hand partnership going again. Well, a new partnership at the middle now for Clontarf. But again, two batsmen with very big bats. Would David Delaney normally come in as high as number four or is it the match situation has brought him in? I would, yeah. No, David is unbelievable batter and um, it's great to see him back. The, the lift it's given Clontarf since he's kind of come back into the team not only his talent but the boost he gives to, to everyone else in the team as well well we saw that on Thursday at the IP Festival it was great to see him back and bowling bowling quickly yeah he's bowling rapid and he's a super batter as well well he was onto that one quickly didn't get the clean hit on it he wanted but it ran out square leg gets a single retains the strike and the score at the end of the over 207 for two that's a very good over 
for Clontarf. A wicket and a single. Sorry, a better over for the hills than Clontarf, of course. But again, we've now reached the situation. Just 13 overs to go in this innings. Clontarf won't mind losing a wicket or two. They're now chasing a big total. Big time. But if these two lads get going, there could be serious fireworks. These, they hit the ball hard. They clear ropes. The one thing about David Delaney, played against him a, a couple of times. He, he's unbelievable at playing spin. He really gets back and uses the depth of his crease so well. Nice footwork there from Delaney as he just pushed that out on the offside. Hills feeling like they're trying to get drag themselves back into this game now. They've taken two wickets in successive overs. And Hills, they will be thinking if they can string a few good overs here together and get themselves a bit of momentum going into the into the second innings. Momentum, it's a word we hear in sports all the time now. Whether the momentum's with a side at the moment, you have to think it's still with Clontarf. 208 on the board, eight wickets in hand. But there is a bit more of a spring in the step of the Hills fielders now. Yeah, those two wickets have just livened them up. Bit more chat around, bit more clapping. Well, there are still 13 overs to go, 12 and a half overs to go, but you wouldn't expect the batsman to come out and just start swinging straight away. Both of these two. Be eager to get off to a decent start. Make sure they're seeing the ball, timing the ball well before they really take it on. But again, that's the advantage of a 200 opening partnership is it takes all the pressure off. You can take a couple of overs to play yourself in. Yeah, well, that's the thing with these two. These two batters are so destructive that if they get their eye in, you know, they can take a couple of siders and then they can go big. Just nine runs in the last three, uh, five overs. My apologies, nine runs off the last three overs. But the fall of those two wickets as well has been a big help in that. Captain Kavanagh had only bowled two overs in the Cup this year before today. This is his third in just this game. Yeah, fair play to him. Probably thought something needed to happen. He's the skipper and he took on, took on the responsibility. A bit shorter from Kavanagh on that occasion. Delaney just punching it up to long off, takes the single. Well, PJ Moore picking that one on length, hoiking it out towards Cow. Just a single as the fielder covered the ground, stopped it reaching the boundary. 
Yeah, so many times as captain, when you're in a difficult position, you look to your senior players, and then you look to yourself. <laughs> Fires that one back. Well, a bit of everything going on there. Kevin is trying to fire the ball back to the keeper. Batsman just letting it hit him on the pad. In fact, almost a kick at it. <laughs> Uh, but they turn down the possibility of any run. And it's been played in a good spirit so far. Made his ground safely, but not without concern. Big dive to get back. That's the end of the over. 212 for two. Just 11 overs remaining, but that 11 overs, 66 balls. Well, a runner ball, get them up to 270, 280. And they'll be looking for more than that, certainly with eight wickets still in hand. Yeah, without a doubt, I think Clontarf will certainly be looking for, 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 for 300 plus here, still. And there are the bowling figures so far, plenty of bowling used. The thing about this innings is it hasn't really been spectacular fireworks, but they're going along very nicely. Oh, I say that. What's, what's the opposite of commentator's curse? Because that's it. No fireworks, I said. And immediately, PJ Moore lights the blue touch paper and steps back. Punches that one over long on for a big six. Yeah, he makes it look so easy as well. He just... Goes through with a shot. All right, hit the reset button again now. Well backed up because that was a Fierce throw from the fielder. But Delaney got there safely. Look at that. Nonchalant. Love that word. <laughs> it's the only word that makes you speak like a Frenchman. Nonchalantly dumped past the nets. Six runs onto the total. Well, not to be left out. <clears throat> Delaney goes big as well. Out towards Cow Corner. Gets hold of that one. Well, the, we were talking about the acceleration. These two seem to have be happy enough that they played themselves in, and they're going to take on Damsgaard, that's for sure. This figure's not too bad before this over, but two sixes, well, they make a mess of anybody's figures. Well, these two batters aren't going to hold back. Both of them are very, very dangerous. Seem like they have their eyes in out of time and a little bit better and just... Could be in for a bit of a good view on. Well, the right had slowed down a bit, but that's so neatly played. He was looking for a bigger shot, realised it wasn't on, and instead picks up two just by paddling it round the corner. Yeah, and great to see he doesn't only have those power shots that he, that, he, that he can hit. He has little soft touches like that where he can manipulate the field and just pick gaps as well. 15 coming from that, the 40th over. The score has moved on to 227 for two. And with 10 overs remaining, I shall leave Finton in the commentary box and welcome back Sean Hussey. Thank you, Craig. Good afternoon, everyone. Lachlan Tarf after that wonderful 200 run opening partnership lost a couple of wickets but they'll be happy with the two men who are at the, the crease a wonderful shot from PJ Moore and we could be in for some excitement here Gloria 6 
His second. That's Watch a, out in the crowd. A beautiful shot. A tricky one to play. A hard shot to play that one as well. Picked it up sweetly and over the ropes for six. Tossed up. This time goes leg side. Work for Cormac McLaughlin. Gavin in the deep, but he can't get there. Clontarf dealing in boundaries. Well, you see spin from both ends. And a little bit earlier when the Hills needed wickets, they gave extra overs to Nulty and McNichol. They could well be coming back to haunt them here. It's the spin at the moment. The last couple of overs, these two, two dangerous batters. Right hand, left hand partnership as well. Of course, tomorrow, or on Monday rather, the Bank Holiday Monday, we've got the Women's Spring Coat and Senior Cup Final between Pembroke, the home side, and Merrion. That's at 4 o'clock, which is preceded at 12 noon by the Women's Minor Cup Final. Clontarf 3s against Rush 2s. So hopefully the Bank Holiday weather will kick in. It'll be a wide delivery. Umpire Azamali Beg. Got David Delaney. He must be targeting leg side, looking for that clubhouse. That's the shot he plays. He <laughs> plays that one so well. I've seen him out there, played against him, and he just gets back and uses the depth, depth of his crease. And he basically takes it out of the wicketkeeper's gloves. And he just gets those singles where other players are, are patting it back for a dot. Plays with such power as well, Delaney. Tossed up and played down the ground by PJ Moore. Expensive over this. 14 from it with a delivery to go. Wonder can David Delaney get one away, leg side. A good hard sweep shot, but through the man in the deep. So 15 runs coming from. That Kavanagh over. He's done well in the main. Coming, bringing himself on as captain. It's 30 off the last two overs, is it? Two big overs for Clontarf. I'll trust your math on that one there, Finton. Nine overs to go, Clontarf. 242 for two. See some of the boundaries we've seen. Well, they're going to persist with spin again. Nikolai Damgaard. Well, ball from the St. John's end. David Delaney. Sure will be looking targeting down the ground. Uh, damn guy, it has to be clever with the pace he balls at and indeed the length. <coughs> Saying earlier, that must be one of the, the record partnerships, opening partnerships in a final in, in Leinster. Probably have to chat to Ger Siggins. He know all the stats. We saw Ger down here earlier. May well be inside... Enjoying the Cricket Leinster patrons' lunch. Went by the clubhouse, and I must say, it smells nice. <laughs> if anything else, I'm sure. Jim Bennett's enjoying the lamb shank. <laughs> Might get Jim out for the second innings. Former Cricket Leinster president, this year's president, Pat Banahan, is hosting the lunch. Short ball and just helped on its way. It's a poor delivery, but it still has to be put away by PJ Moore. He's got so much experience. The ideal man to come in at this circumstance. And he's finding his feet. Yeah, that one just dragged down and, and turned around the corner for four runs. <coughs> In the air, and it's six all the way. Straight back past the side screen. Any sort of flight, and PJ Moore is going to take advantage. Well, this is the great work that Delaney and Karuna Khan did earlier, forcing the Hills to bowl some of their faster bowlers in the middle and search for wickets. And the spinners are getting a little bit of treatment towards the back end. And what a job they did open and up. I mean, they've just given these two lads a license to have a go at it. And I tell you, I couldn't think of two more destructive batters around. They had one coming in at that time, at this time. 
Yeah, Clontarf could well be putting themselves out of sight. Although we saw in the NCU Gallagher Cup final yesterday, 350, uh, played 317 with the Hills batting lineup as well. If they got off to a good start, you just never know in this game. But you have to imagine that these next eight overs are so critical for the Hills. The difference between tracing 340, 350, and, and 310, 320, absolutely huge. Tossed up in the air. It's not going to quite carry to McNichol in the deep. But as you see again, any sort of flight from the spinners and Clontarf looking to take it on. 13 runs coming from the 42nd over. Clontarf 255 for two. Looks like McNichol back into the attack here now. Be interesting to see what he's what he's bowling. He's probably gonna you know you really have to get your slower balls, cutters probably working here, hitting your Yorkers, because these two lads will definitely capitalise if you don't. Just wonder if you look at the Clontarf team, no Matthew Weldon, incidentally, was told that he he was down to play for the seconds today, the Hills, which you to be playing, I think up in Angusy Road. Saw him as 12th man for Munster during the week. Good, exciting left arm. A little extra pace, extra variety, left arm pace. And it just seems like they've gone for the extra option at all in the middle. Very exciting young bowler, Matthew Weldon. Yeah, Matthew Weldon. I've seen plenty of him and him quite well. Um, really hard worker. And again, his game is, is, really, is really kicking on for such a, a young player. He's got a, an exciting career ahead of him. I believe he's quite a talented overall sports person. Yeah, he's he's a, a very good Gaelic player as well. There with, with Scary's Harps. Oh, McNichol. Four hours for him left. You'd imagine it's all going to be from the Wheelfield Road end. Put well up top. A little bit wick, wickedless. David Delaney goes for the ramp. And it's a wonderful shot. It's a part of his game he's developed in the last while. And when you add in the fact that he can bowl at a very high pace, what an exciting player David Delaney is. And we probably haven't seen the best of him at representative level, but showing it in the cup final here. Just We were just saying earlier, the, the boost he's given Clontair since he's been back, uh, not only his, his own game, but the confidence he gives the players around him and... Hits 360 as well. Goes again. The man has been pushed back. So it'll just be one. Just toying with the hill slightly, David Delaney. But also someone like David Delaney, who, albeit has only had a small taste of international cricket and higher honours. You get the sense when he plays for Clontarf, it's the most important game in the world. The club that means so much to him and, of course, his family but someone who's given Clontarf so much over the number over the last number of years. Yeah, huge family tradition in the club. And I can tell you, I know, I know David personally, and I'll tell you one thing, he absolutely loves playing for Clontarf. He loves the club. Good bowling from McNichol, just tucking it into PJ Moore. And a great fella. He's came right up through the youth system there. And I mean, look at the cricket he's turned into. When you have a player who can, he can score you 191 day, and he, he he bowls at 85 to 90 mile an hour. Well, you'd imagine the next step for David Delaney will be to get back into the international fold. Quite clearly, didn't work in the last couple of years for me. Had a little taste of it, but definitely seems like the best version of David Delaney we've seen. Spent a lot of time in Australia. Now will regard himself very much as an all-rounder. And playing a vital role here for his side. Him and PJ Moore capitalising on the brilliance of the opening stand. We'll change of angle from McNichol. If these lads continue, it would be a left-hand, right-hand combination right throughout the game. 
Well, even if you think you've got John McNally or Robert Forrest to come for you in hand. Yeah, left, right. Well, it's a, it's a great ability to have. If you look at that England middle order of that great World Cup winning side with Owen Morgan, who obviously you'll know well, Finton, but you had Owen Morgan and Ben Stokes. and just gives you that extra advantage. Having a couple of left-handers in there and PJ Moore goes high and goes all the way for six. Didn't quite get all of it into the wind, but mid-off was in the ring. And another six for PJ Moore. And he's moved to 40 from 20. As you said there, yeah, didn't get, didn't quite get uh, all of the ball there. Didn't come out of the middle, but such is the, the power of the man that it cleared the ropes. Slower ball played into the deep. Immediate call at two. I'm not sure they'll take on the arm of Rooney Murphy. And another really good over. Clontarf are on the charge. Yeah, 269 for two with seven overs to go. Yeah, I think seam bowlers here really have to start start mixing up their pace. Ball and cutters, back of the hand, and just anything bar length. At the moment will be key. And if you, ha you have the confidence, obviously the best step bowling you can do is probably... Is it is a Yorker? But I tell you, if you miss it by an inch here, with these two lads in, you're going to be in trouble. So it is going to be damn guard to continue. Can't afford to bowl too much flight here. You do feel like these two are going to take anything on that's thrown up towards them in their own half. I almost want to bang it into the pitch. There's the ramp shot from David Delaney. Look at the position he gets himself into. Even with a man with such power. A kind of finesse so important. And a hard man to set the field to because he hits everywhere around the ground. But you get the sense that he enjoys almost toying with opposition by playing these shots. In the air. And that's six again. Into the side screen. Well, what a knock this is from PJ Moore. Moves to 47. And he's causing huge issues for the Hills. Just wonder what can Damgard do? Can he throw it wider, a bit quicker? Uh, it's better delivery. But more into the pitch, not as much flight. Could work behind the stumps by Mark Donegan. Yeah, he's kept well here today, Mark Donegan. Again, good bowling into the pitch. Wide. Of the crease, and that was the one that PJ Moore hit for six earlier in the over. Into the pitch and in the air. And Damgar gets the wicket. Well, I think the Hills realised anything that they tossed up was going to be hit down the ground again into the wicket. And PJ Moore, who batted beautifully for his 47, has to go. And Clontarf lose that third. Yeah, that's been a brilliant knock by PJ Moore. Yeah, brilliant partnership that between Delaney and Moore. We're at 69 after the two wickets fell quickly. Well, it doesn't get any easier for the Hills. When they're just having their drink of water, looking at who comes in. Fionn Hand has sprinted in. As you can see, the dismissal banged into the wicket and just lost his shape, PJ Moore. But again, right hand, left hand, Fionn Hand in now alongside David Delaney. Another all action cricketer. Yeah, Fionn Hand is again another destructive batter and another player quite like David Delaney. He, he can play those scoops and he can hit down the ground. So another man who's very hard to set a field because he hits 360 as well. So the Hills have a big job on their hands here now to, to try and close out this innings. But geez, it just seems to be no let up every player that's coming in. Is, is well capable of clearing the ropes. Well, the highest total in the Leinster Senior Cup this year was 269 by Clontarf against Malahide. This in the Cup Final. It's already beaten it, moved on now with that wide to 276 for three. So 
Clone Tariff saving the best till last. Well, and you think you've still got, as I say, John McNally to come. Robert Forrest as well. Yeah, well, Robert Forrest just putting the pads on over there. I'm sure he'll be eager to get in. <laughs> Bit of late order entertainment. Yeah, and Bobo, he, he loves the competition as well, so. Yeah, I wonder just what does Delaney do here? Point up all of Damgaard's night over. Again, brilliant batting. Beautiful shot. And gets four, anticipates that Damgaard is probably going to try and get out of the over by bowling a flatter one. Just scoops it past the man of 45. Two boundaries again in that over. 11, 12 runs coming from it and the wicket. Six overs to go, Clontarf in a wonderful position. A 2.81 for three. That's just very clever cricket. He plays that sweep shot so well, that little that little dab. You get so much power on it as well, which is You can see what Damgaard's trying to do. Ball of flatter, quicker. Not give Delaney any air. And just anticipates that. Very clever cricket. <coughs> For Rutches, his bowling's about pace and power. Bit of guile there from David Delaney. I wonder what Fionn Han does here. Third man is in the ring. Yeah, you can certainly play that scoop shot as well, so that's that might come in. Well, I was just looking to see if there was a fine leg. And Jonathan Tall was very square there, and that is a help yourself for a few on hand. Just yeah. Wondering about that field placement there. Yeah, just really dragged that one down and and a player like Fionn Hand isn't going to miss out on that. And take full advantage. So there's a big gap. The man, Jonathan Tall, as I said, did no orthodox fine leg. It's very square. Man there. And that's why the ramp is on. And I just think the Hills have slightly lost the plot here by allowing Fionn Hand to do that. It felt like he knew the shot. He was going to play before the delivery was bowled. I always think the ramp shot's a little bit easier when the ball is coming from around the wicket. And as you mentioned a little bit earlier, Finton, so good at that shot, Fionn Hand. Yeah, he plays well and he actually plays it over, he plays both sides as well. So he has that in his armory. But again, what you said there, I think the thinking, you've got fine leg and third man up in the ring. You know, you can't really be bowling at length from around the wicket. Probably have to look at your slower balls and your cutters because these two players play that shot, they're going to get... Oh. Well, he goes for the switch hit and a run out and the direct hit, he would have been gone and a misfield. So it's all happening here for the Hills. They just need to get the game back under control slightly. It's always difficult. You feel like you've been chasing the ball around for into the 45th over now. Just got to try and regain a little bit of composure, a little bit of cool heads needed. Easier said than done. Oh, and it's a drop catch. Fionn hand on the pull shot. Jonathan Tall. I'd be disappointed with that, the Hills. Chance goes for the hills down in front of us. Delaney, do you think, is going to be targeting leg side towards the clubhouse? Shorter boundary at the corner, those who know the ground. Right on cow corner, can he find it? Slower ball, good change up. Seems like the change ups are working. When they have gone to them, the hills. Maybe yeah. something that Clontarf take note of. Yeah, I think they should be looking to probably do that every every second ball and and keep on mixing it up, keep the bat batters guessing. 
on the ball of the 45th. Third man is in the ring. And just clever cricket there from the hills because he only had three men inside the ring. So it would have been a no ball. I think it was Kean Nolte there. Just I reckon he could be going, I reckon, reverse, reverse lap here. Yeah, if only one man deep on the offside, and that's a long off. Goes again. Given a wide by umpire Sujay Nakamura. And just questioned by the bowler there, because I think the wide was given for over the head height. A few on handle again, another delivery, but you can see what he's trying to do. <coughs> Can he get one away on the offside hand? Good delivery, really good by McNichol. Gets himself out of that over. Five hours to go. As you can see, that slower ball there, that Fionn hand still managed to get round the corner. His fine leg was in the ring <coughs> so five hours ago we're going to have a change in the commentary box Fintan McAllister is just stepping out we'll hear from him a little bit later there's a difficult chance for Jonathan Tall and I'm going to be joined for the last five hours by Craig Senior well <coughs> this has been some innings Tom Toff put into bat by the hills acceleration at the right time certainly looking over 300 now 320 330 yeah it just seems like a perfectly executed innings this by Clontarf it's changing in the field here three on the deep leg side and two on the deep offside anything pitched up and is going to go after Oh, that will frustrate the hills. Yeah, good work by Jonathan Tall. Saves two runs. <coughs> well, lost over. He was fielding right in front of us. Now he's in front of the clubhouse and chased that one down very nicely. Saved a couple of runs. Every run that the hills can save now. Well, they'll have seen this batting track. Clever bowling, some damn card. Just bowling it into the pitch. They haven't done enough of that towards the death. Clontorf closing in on 300 now. That's the highest total of the tournament this year. What a time to do it in the final. That was going to be given a wide, too wide. You can see what he's trying to do. <coughs> okay, good bowling. Good from Damgard. If he can get out of this over without a boundary, they'll feel like a win for them. But it's 300 up for Clontarf. And the 46th over. Wonderful stuff. After the brilliance earlier from the opener has been carried on by Moore, Delaney, and now Hand. Well, be a wide. So Mark Donegan was appealing for the cop behind. He's sure it's hit something. With the umpire signalling a wide. So two in the over. In the air. And a good catch. Kian Nolte. And has to go. It was quick and eventful. He goes for 15. Damgar gets his third. It's been a good over this from him. It's been difficult work for the Hills, but if they can battle back in these final four overs or so, they might give themselves a chance. 
total of 300 past. The Hills will need over a runner ball from their 50 overs. But again, they have a strong batting lineup as well. And it seems like it's a day for batting. Here's the delivery that brought the downfall. And once he hit it, he knew he was in trouble. And he heads back, not even crossing. Yeah, nice shot, just not enough on it. Kian Nolte taking nice catch out on the boundary. A long on boundary. And now with just four overs and two balls to go. Hills will be looking to try and restrict Lontaf as much as they can here. They're going to continue with the right hand, left hand. Robert Forrest, normally so good at scoring quickly towards the end. He comes in at number six. Very loud, as he often is, Robert Forrest, but it's been a good. Final over for Damgard. Been a difficult spell for him. His 10 overs have yielded 70 runs. He's picked up three wickets. Clontarf are past the 300 with four overs to go. Now 302 for four. Well, we could see some fireworks in this last four overs now. <coughs> Plenty of wickets in hand. Score now. 302. Everybody who's come in has made a contribution. Fee on hand. Well, he went for 15, but it only took him nine balls. And the intent was there. Shown in the method of his dismissal as well. Boundary for Robert Forrest. Difficult one for Jonathan Tall on the half bounce. And four more for Clontarf. Well, change in the field now. More personnel change than a positional change, but four off the first ball. It was in short, and Forrest was onto it very quickly. Media call or two. Work to do for Cummins in the deep. A good running from Clontarf. These are valuable runs. Well, they made that look easy. It was running the first one quickly and the immediate decision to look for two. And they got two. Well, as Robert Forrest got up his sleeve, short ball, and he just takes the single. Give David Delaney the strike. Tennis ball bounce for McNichol on that occasion. And Robert Forrest having to employ the overhead smash just to get the ball out the leg side. You see how short it is there. That's the one he hit for four. Oh, Jonathan Tool, very unfortunate there. Got something behind it, but it came off his kneecap and ran away for four. Third man in the ring for Delaney. I wonder if he try a oh, clever batting. He's going to look for two. Won't get it. Good work by Jonathan Tall. Nice clever bowling from McNichol. Starting to pull this back. Ever so slightly, the hills. And as we say, the difference between chasing 350 and 330, huge. It's more for the mental side of it. Short ball again, pulled into the deep. I don't think they've done enough of that. I know it's been hard with the right hand, left hand, but Robert Forrest are hitting to the longer boundary. 
could see it. It was almost trying to overhit that. <laughs> he saw how short it was. And he looked for the big shot. But the more he was trying to put his power in, the more it took away from his timing. And they ended up with just a single for that one, which is a good result for the Hills at this stage. As we enter the last few overs. But 311 is an immense target to be setting. And they'll be hoping to add a few more to that now. Media caller too from Robert Forrest. That's really good communication from the two of them. Would have played an awful lot of cricket together. 11 from the over. Three to go. On tar. 313 for four. Well, <coughs> those are the bowling figures for the Hills. You can see they've used the seven bowlers. Just two of them bowled out so far. Ian Nolte there, just going at four and over. But it's Damgard who's taken the three wickets to full. His three wickets costing 70 runs from his 10 overs. 20 extras. Well, early on in this innings, which seems quite a while ago, extras at one stage were equal top scorer. But that's changed now. This comes off. Well, they've been batting exceptionally well. 88 for Owen Delaney in that opening partnership of 204. Karuna Karan, 105. PJ Moore, 47. Nolte. Full and straight. Beautiful piece of bowling. Well, whatever happens, Ken Nolte's not going to bowl his full complement. And I might just wonder, is that a mistake? Come the end, the Hills margin so small in the cup final, but wonderful piece of bowling does for Robert Forrest. Well, it was brief and all action from Robert Forrest. Nine from six deliveries, but he provided Delaney with the ideal partner. And now with just two overs and five deliveries to come, as Kean Nolte picks up his first wicket, he has been the most economical. And on this occasion, he got one angled in. It hit the back pad of the forest and ran onto the stumps. Some consolation for the hills. And some help for them too. New batsman to the middle. Always the best way to slow down an over rate. Just think. Rate. Just think for the Hills, can they keep them down to that 330? Have to try and pick up a couple of more wickets. It's been a couple of drop chances and just lost their way in that middle part of the game. But can Kane Nolte bring it back for them? That was full and straight again and a little bit too full. Full toss and Cronje puts it away. Disappointed with himself, Kane Nolte. Well, if you were coming in with just a couple of overs to go. That would be the delivery you want to open your account. A full toss on his pads, and he clipped it away, <coughs> square on the leg side, picked up the boundary, and he's off and running. Brilliant slower ball. This is brilliant from Kian Nolte. It's exactly what the Hills need. Just goes to show you, if you can get a right at the end, it can be so effective. And as I said earlier, just gonna look, it's going to look like Nolte's not going to bowl his full complement. Well, we know he isn't. Just think the Hills have got that wrong. I know it's hard for 50 overs. But great comeback from Nolte. Well, there's Cronje <coughs> just playing that out. That was his first ball. Played out square on the leg side, reaching the sprint advertising hoarding. And that's a super delivery. Came out of the back of the hand, slower pace. And Cronier's stay is but a short one. How the Hills would have wished to have taken a few of these wickets earlier in the proceedings. So John McNally is the new batsman. He comes out. 
with 15 bulls remaining. And as you see on the bottom radio screen there, well, Kian Nolte, he's picked up two wickets in this over. And he really has been statistically the most impressive. Slight misfield. I won't worry the hills too much, but yeah, I think you're right. And not even to stick, but threatening wise, Kane Nolte just seems to be the best bowler today. And he's not going to bowl his 10 overs, which is a real shame for the hills. And you think about how much of a like in PJ Moore and David Delaney took to the spin earlier on. Would have been better suited being bowled by Kian Nolte. That's going to be a wide. It's just questioning that slightly. Right. Two balls remaining in this, the 48th <coughs> over. Two wickets have fallen, which has been a big help for the Hills. That's a terrific shot. He's searching for the Yorker, and the two deliveries that have gone to the fence in this over have been those full tosses. But what David Delaney does well here, he picks the gap, knows he doesn't need to over hit. That's a wonderful shot. Such clever cricket. Well, 10 runs have been added to the score in this over. Again, another one dug in short. Now that's a good over, although it's gone for 10. 11 rather with the wide. Picked up those couple of wickets. Two overs to go, Clontarf, 324 for six. Look at that shot, I know it's a full toss, but just so clever the way he plays that. Finds the gap, races away, sun's coming out now. Just goes to show you the benefit of timing. Didn't overhit it at all. Yeah, there's a big crowd gathering here now, and it should be a wonderful second innings. Just hope for the neutral sake that the Hills can get off to a good start because they are chasing what is going to be a big total. Might well be that 350, but we'll be up around that 340 mark. So looking at around seven runs and over from the get go. As we say, one of the great days in the Cricket Leinster calendar. The Skellig 618 Men's Senior Cup final here at Sydney Parade between Clontarf and the Hills. Two overs to go. After earlier this morning, the Hills won the toss in very different conditions with the pitch being covered overnight after very heavy downpour. Good delivery from McNichol. And now it looks like a good toss to lose from Clontarf's point of view. Well, the Hills would be disappointed, didn't quite bowl as well as they have liked early on, didn't create an awful amount of chances. Just a reminder that on Monday, we've got the Spring Cotons Women's Senior Cup final between Pembroke and Merriant, live here from Sydney Parade. That's four o'clock on the bank holiday here in Ireland. And in that game, the curtain raiser to that game will be the Spring Cotons Women's Minor Cup final between Clontarf thirds and Rush seconds at 12 noon. So plenty going on. Good slow ball. They're going to look for two. Work to do in the deep for Tomas Rooney Murphy. That's clever cricket from David Delaney. Wasn't there to hit all the way. So just tucked into the leg side. Picks up two. Just ten balls remaining in this innings now. How many more can Clontarf add to this massive 326? Played leg side again. We'll look for two. Jonathan Tall comes off the fence. Bit of a misfield. Clever again from David Delaney. Just making sure his side gets up above that 340. Nine deliveries to go. say the Clunt or the Hills fast bowlers just seem to have got it right in these last couple of overs no wickets have fallen but just been a little bit more cleverer more canny 
looks for the ramp that's good for McNichol Delaney's never getting a wide for that I feel like he's missed out there because he could have got bat on ball but they've come back well the Hills just looking for any sort of momentum to drag with them into the second innings mentioned some of the batters they've got Corwin McLaughlin Gavin who's such an important player for them at the top they've got the Danish international Nick Nye Damgaard hard hitting Nathan Rooney as well good delivery from McNichols it's been a good over from him We've got the Leinster Lightning Mark Donegan in there so they feel like they might be in the game in the second innings they're going to need a quick start that is for sure Murray, Murray Cummins in there as well international quality it's turning into a beautiful afternoon here now the wind dropping a bit the clouds clearing and that's another good ball another dot ball that's a wonderful over from Sean McNichol just the five he's bowled well today wicketless but done a good job for his team towards the end six balls to go going to be bowled by Kian Nolte Clontarf have been brilliant all day with the bat can they get over that 340 mark 329 for 6 after 49 overs one thing that the Hills have managed during this incredible innings by Clontarf is when they take one wicket the second one falls shortly afterwards first wicket fell in the 36 over the second in the 37th and then one fell in the 44th and one in the 46th and then two in that 48th <laughs> over and now Nolte again looking to add to that but again as Sean was saying a bit of a shame he hasn't been able to bowl his 10 overs full wonderful shot from David Delaney work to do in the deep and he can't get there that's the problem with going for Yorkers. If you don't quite get it, there is scoring opportunities. Keen Nutty just seems to have hurt himself in there. But David Delaney, powerful shot down the ground, picks up four. One of the things that the Hills did do was Lash Oji. He bowled the 10th and the 12th over. That could have been Nutty's spare two overs. It is so difficult in the 50 over format, particularly, as I say, when you are chasing leather. Look what Delaney does, opens that front leg, labels his hands through the ball. Nathan Rooney tried, couldn't quite get there, was past him. Five deliveries to go, three, three, three for six. Slower ball, played offside. Good work by Andy Cavanagh. Would just be one perfect result. For the Hills, they want Delaney off strike as much as possible. Well, these two came together with the score on 3 1 7. They've put on 17. As you can see, McNally's only faced two balls and scored one run. Short ball. Uh, brilliant work by Mark Donegan. Well, every, li every little helps at this stage for the Hills. Good short delivery. Bent his back there to Keane Nulty and brilliant work by Mark Donegan. Just ensures David Delaney doesn't get back onto strike. It's half lose their seventh wicket. Keane Nulty has been very impressive and good work behind the stumps from Mark Donegan. Well, he had a fabulous stumping earlier on, and this time he affects the run out. As you can see. It's set off early, but absolute spot on throw, hitting middle stump. Had three to aim at, but hit the middle one just to make sure. And seven wickets down now, three, three, four. And just four balls remaining. Oh, three balls remaining. Luke Thompson, the new batter, to the middle. Two of Clontarf's young stars. Expect to see them both with the ball a little bit later. McNally and Thompson. Just changing the field here. Fine leg going back, protecting that short 
boundary back towards the clubhouse. Third man coming into the circle, mid off, up as well. A great bowling from Kea Nolte. Great execution of the Yorker. He's been really good. He's been a player really from a young age. Started off playing a lot of cricket in Balbriggan. I played a lot against him myself. Very good bowler in his day, early on in his career rather. Struggled with a few injuries, but now it seems to be bowling at a really good pace for the Hills. And I'm just surprised he won't bowl out today. I think it's a mistake. Short ball, and that's a wonderful shot by John McNally. Goes all the way. Gets one of the biggest cheers of the day, John McNally. Another young star for Clontarf. That's a bonus. Gets them up over that 340. Now, one ball remaining. I don't, don't think there's any lamb shank left for us today, but the innings break is nearly upon us. Short ball in the air. Looking for two. A really good running. They get to 3-4-3, Clontarf. After a wonderful 200-run opening stand. Laid over heroics from PJ Moore. There was the six from John McNally. David Delaney batted well, getting to the 40s. A wonderful from Clontarf. They'll feel like they're in the ascendancy. The Hills are going to have to come out all guns blazing if they're to get their hands on the Skellig 618 Men's Senior Cup for 2023. Very fascinating 50 overs of cricket for the large park Clontarf were dominant. The Hills fought back at the end. But the first 10 overs of the Hills innings is going to be absolutely crucial. They're going to have to get off to a good start, a fast start. A wonderful effort with the bat from Clontarf. Delaney and Karuna Karan. Outstanding, wonderful century from Karuna Karan. Well, what a card for Clontarf. That opening partnership of 204 between Owen Delaney and Ryan Karuna Karan. 105 for him. PJ Moore came in then and he bludgeoned 47. And David Delaney with some few absolutely massive shots, taking 44. The rest came and went, but they went quickly. And they collected their runs quickly and kept that run rate up. Just the 21 extras in 50 overs. And As you can see, just eight overs for Kean Nulty. I think when the hills look back, that may well be a telling mistake. Two wickets for him at the death. Sean McNichol bowled well, wickedless. Two overs for Bavesh Lakota earlier on. Three wickets for Nikolai Damgaard. Nathan, or Tomas Rooney Murphy bowled well, was unlucky. Had a little bit of everything in his 10 overs. One wicket for Andrew Kavanagh and six overs from Jonathan Tall. But it's Clontarf who are in the driving seat. The Hills have it all to do. You'll see the wickets in clumps throughout. A wonderful opening stand, the platform that Clontarf built from. So that's where we are. The first 50 overs have gone the way of Clontarf. 3-4-3 three, three for seven. Wonderful opening stand has given them a real chance of equaling Phoenix as the most successful side in Senior Cup, in Leinster Senior Cup cricket. We'll be back a little bit later for the second innings and we'll see can the Hills make it a wonderful second innings and give the big crowd here something to cheer about. We'll be back very, very shortly in the next half an hour or so.
Well, welcome back, Sydney Parade. And what a first innings we saw. Clontarf amassing, and amassing being the right word. 343 for seven. Well, the backbone of that was the opening partnership between Owen Delaney and Ryan Karuna Karan. They put on 100, 204 for the first wicket. And that gave free range to the rest of the Clontarf batters as they came in one by one to take on the bowling. And it's managed to get them to 343. The Hills require 344 and just above, just about 6.9 and over. It's going to be a tough chase. But I tell you, if they do chase this down, it's going to be one of the most entertaining chases you'll see this or any other season. I'm joined in the commentary box for this second innings by Sean Hussey. Vinton McAllister taken away from us. Yeah, thank you, Craig. I think you're right. I think this could be box office cricket early on because the Hills can't hang around and you've got, what you'll imagine, two Irish internationals. There's certainly guys who played at the highest level. David Delaney, who we saw during the week for the Leinster Lightning and his teammate at provincial level and club level few on hand so it's not going to be easy for the hills it's a few around it could be a really exciting start to the second innings well yes these two batsmen Cummins and McLaughlin Gavin well experienced David Delaney then to open the bowling from the nursery end Ply gets off the mark, outside edge running down to third man. And that will bring McLaughlin Gavin on to face his first ball. Well, on fields the hills, they're going to have to go at a decent rate, not to let that required run rate jump too high. But also... I really can't afford to lose too many wickets, especially in this first power play. Just two fielders outside the ring to start with. Oh, well, that was short ball from Delaney. Only got up about waist high. Played round the corner, quite close to the square leg fielder, but not close enough. Another single. Well, in a way for these two, there's no real second guessing themselves. They've got to get off to a good start. They know the target, they know the run rate's high, starting at around 6.9. So they're not going to need a quick start from them. So there's no hanging around. Well, the fielder's not going to cut that one off. Played wide of the slips. First boundary of the innings. And already they're starting to use the extra pace that Delaney brings to their advantage. Yeah, poor delivery from Delaney. Short and wide. McLaughlin Glavin's a really classical player. Both of these openers are. Won't look to over hit, particularly with only two allowed outside in the power play. So plenty of chances to score. Yes, when Clontarf started this cup final, they were quite cautious at the start. The wicket had been under the covers. They'd been put into bat. And there's the four, beautifully played. Played down primarily, and then ran away down to that car park corner. Well, it actually wasn't as wide as first thought. That's a really good shot from McLaughlin Gavin. As I say, classical player, both of these are. Bit of a way swing there for Delaney. That one going through to the keeper. Dot ball. Well, we said they needed about seven and over. They already have seven off this one. Easy enough to score seven in and over. The problem is doing it for 50 overs. <laughs> 
Still a bit of a cool breeze coming across the ground, but plenty of blue sky above us at the moment. Well, that's the end of the first over. He ends with three dots, but the hills off and running. Seven for no wicket after one over. Well, I was given the DL sheet as it stood. Let's hope that we don't have to refer to that too often, except perhaps to see that the hills progress against this massive total of 343. Well, hopefully we avoid the rain and if the, I suppose, sacrifice for not having rain has been absolutely frozen, and I think we'll accept that because it is very chilly at the moment. There's a, seems to where we are in the ground, we're feeling the brunt of the wind, the wind's coming down your screen as you're looking at where, a couple of metres to the right of that camera you're looking at there now down towards the nets here in Pembroke. Well, it's a lot warmer on the wall. And there's a big crowd there now. Well, that was not what the Hills were looking for. Fee on hand, he's struck with his first delivery. And what a great start for Clontarf. Murray Cummins, who would have been one of the rated bats in the Hills lineup, is on his way back to the pavilion. Yeah, real disappointment for the Hills. And with, that's a crushing blow. May well be the most devastating punch landed today. You would have felt Murray Cummins I mean, in, in, being in such good form for the Munster Reds. Just seemed like that one just popped on him. Just chipped it back to the bowler. One hand catches it in the air. And he's got a bit of a golden arm. And he struck early here. The dangerous Cummins has to go. And the Hills, well, it was always going to be a tough task. And it's just got that bit tougher. Well, soft dismissal. You have the feeling that Cummins will be very disappointed going back to the pavilion so early. Seven for one. The contrast between the two opening partnerships couldn't be wider. Well, new batsman in. Quite wisely just letting that one go through to the keeper. And I think if you're Clon Tarf, you are here to sense blood now. You've got so many runs to play with. You can afford to be a little bit aggressive. Want to try and get as many wickets as possible early. Don't allow any batters to set. It's going to be difficult to get going on this wicket. Well, that ball just leaping off a length, causing difficulties to the batsman. Lakota has come in at number three. And whereas it was a mountain beforehand, they're now having to attempt to climb the, the sheer side of it. Yeah, and as we said, we've seen a lot of cricket, myself and yourself here, Craig, this week with the Enterprise. Always been difficult getting going, getting used to the wicket. And what... Ideally, these Hills batters would like to do is get themselves in. They can't really afford that. That run rate nearing seven already. 6.97, a couple of dots away from it being seven. So that's how impressive Delaney and Karuna Khan were. They weathered a little bit of early pressure, not an awful lot, changing the field, extra slip goes in place. Oh, and Delaney sensing good time to attack. No, and as we said, it's just been difficult getting going on this wicket all week. A lot of rain around the last month. Well, he gets off the mark. It will be pulled up inside the boundary. It will just be two. And well backed up as well. Throw just bouncing <laughs> off the wickets. But a great start for Clontarf again. We said it in the first inning, it was a great start for Clontarf, and here they are again with another good start. Well, one thing about Pavesh Lakota is he's very much a stroke maker, so we'll take it on if it's in his area. Well, 
parried behind by the keeper. <coughs> Four onto the board. Well, nothing wrong with the run rate for the Hills. But again, it's the loss of that wicket so early on. First ball of this over. Fee on hand, forcing Cummins just to pass it back to him. This one coming off the inside edge. Two overs gone. 14 for one. Whereas it took the hills. Well, it was the 36 over before the first wicket fell. With the score on 204. And that's what's the basis of this 3-4-3. Three, three. Well, there'll be plenty of chat in the... Clontar field, plenty of encouragement. As Sean said, runs to play with here. <coughs> Delaney then to continue from the nursery end. One of the things the Hills Bowl has found throughout, learnt, I suppose, and, and, and practiced towards the end of the innings was how to bowl on this wicket. You were saying that they were more pushing it into the pitch, making the batsman hit the ball, making them take it on. Yeah, particularly at the death. Don't think they got their line or length right early on to the Hills. Exactly with that newer ball. A fine piece of fielding down in the corner. Yeah, good work by Killian McDonald. But again, any sort of width and McLaughlin Gavin very happy to get bat on ball. What we'll question the running there? There should have been three. It's not. One of the strong points of Bavesh Lakota's game. You just can't afford to leave any runs behind for the Hills. It's, it's going to be a difficult task for them. And a lot of it is how they approach this chase. If they start looking at 3-4-3 three, three, and how do we chase that, it will give them difficulties. What they need to do is pick smaller targets along the way. Landmarks, I suppose you'd call it. The first 50 came up for Clontarf in the 13th over. It took them 22 overs to get to the first 100. So it just goes to show that as long as you play sensibly, play yourself in, the opportunities will arise to score. be quite daunting for the Hills batsman coming out to face you'd almost say a rejuvenated David Delaney certainly making his mark whether it be in the blue of Clontarf or the blue of Leinster this week just played away and as we said earlier Myself and Pinto were on top about David Delaney and his love for playing for Clontarf. David Delaney is at his best when Clontarf need him. Might necessarily need him now with the game where it is, but if it does get a little bit tighter later, he's so effective at coming on. Especially when there's a few Clontarf fans around and they just give him that lift. Oh, and Delaney knows him so well, of course. He uses him extremely well. Gonna be so so dangerous, David Delaney. Always good to play in front of such a crowd, an appreciative crowd. Well, flashing blade from McLaughlin Gavin to finish the over, but it goes through to the keeper. 
Just two from that over. And that is a good start. Fee on hand then to continue from the St. John's end. Picked up that wicket in his first over. Side edge squirts away on the leg side to square leg. They're looking for two and they'll get them. Well, as you said, Sean, they've got to take every one of these runs and if there's two on, they've got to take them. Yeah, I don't think Clan Tarf will mind seeing Lakota look to play that expansive drive. That's why they've got the couple of slips in place, as I mentioned earlier, is quite a classical stroke maker. Any sort of movement, hand might find the edge. Well, that ring of steel they have on the offside, two slips and a gully, man at point, covers, mid on, all inside the ring. Man down at third is the player on the offside outside the ring. And whilst the power play is on, there's a, a long leg as well. Lifted out just behind square leg. It will run away to the boundary. Nice shot. Four more runs to the total. Yeah, good shot. A little too straight from hand. And he is a good scorer, Lakota. If he gets in, does tend to score quickly. A little bit too straight from hand. Just looking for that magic delivery. Well, hand strikes again. LBW and the second Hills wicket falls with the score on 22. And Clontarf well on top now. Well, I don't think there was too much the umpire had to consider there. That was three red lights all the way. Brilliant from Fionn Hand. He's got a second and a second over. Lakota has to go, looking to turn that into the leg side again. And the easier, easiest of decisions for Sujay Nunamora. You could see here the four, the previous delivery. That's on leg stump. Put away nicely from Lakota. But then hand strikes back immediately. A little bit straighter. And absolutely adjacent. Middle and off. He may well nearly have been run out anyway. But Lakota has to go. He can have no complaints. Clontarf get their second wicket. And the hills are in a bit of bother. Just see that little nod of the head of the umpire before the finger goes up. And my goodness, it's a Richie Benno score. 22 for two. And Fionn Hand picks up his second in his second over. What a start this has been for Clontarf. What a day it's been for Clontarf. Absolutely massive opening stand for them. And now they've knocked over the first two Hills batsmen with just 22 on the board. Well, well, well. Damgard comes in. Damgard departs. Comes in at number four and falls first ball. And 22 for three. Well, the wind, you can almost feel it going out of the sail of the hills. Fionn hands on a hat trick. What a delivery. All three wickets to fall from the bowling of hand. When he comes back for his third over, and he will come back. 
It'll be on a hat trick. Beautiful piece of uh, bowling. Just drags it on then, damn good. Just see the movement back inside edge onto the stumps. He has to go. Hand is three. And he's pumped up. Well, there are smiles all around. The fielders here now. Three wickets down. <coughs> well. What a start for Clontarf in this. The four overs gone. 22 for three. Still, if you were going to be three down, it's not bad having Donegan coming in at number five. Yeah, it'll be disappointing for the Hills because there's a big crowd building here as well. A lot of people would have been coming down hoping to see a close game, knowing the Hills had to get off to a good start. And they haven't. It's been all Clontarf again. Well, when it's your day, it's your day. You wouldn't be surprised at this stage to hear a Clontarf player picking up the lottery win tonight. <coughs> Delaney steaming in. He's seen three wickets fall at the other end. But this uphill battle for the Hills now, it's going to take something very special from one of their players to get them close here. Three wickets down. And we're in the fifth over. Two runs from that shot. But again, just how can you see the hills coming back from this now? They've dug themselves quite the hole. Well, that's a lovely shot through the offside. Runs away to the boundary. McLaughlin Gavin. As you said, classical player, classical shot. Boundary the result. Yeah, stunning shot from McLaughlin and Gavin. Just lent on that beautifully. Races away. It's all happening around him. He's just keeping his head. Plays so well through the offside. Well, that's coming down to the, well, fielded by my co-commentator. He returns it to the keeper. Four more onto the total. Nicely clipped away. McLaughlin Gavin, he's moved on to 18. He's not hanging around. <laughs> He's seen three wickets fall at the other end, but he's standing tall at the moment. That's beautiful from Delaney. A stunning comeback. Well, he'll be delighted that Fionn Hand has taken three wickets, but he'll want to get in on the act as well. Always good to have, always good to have a rivalry between your fast bowlers. Look at Broad and Anderson. For England for all them years. I'm sure Delaney will be looking to get one, get his name in on the act. Well, Delaney finishes his third. Score has moved on to 32 for three. And you see here, replays of shots in that over. Lovely straight back, just punching that through on the offside, it running away to the boundary. That was the first of 
two boundaries in this inning, in this over. <coughs> and here's the second. Well, a bit uppish, but ran safely down to the commentary box where Sean Hussey completed the fielding. Unsurprisingly, no change. Fion Han now, he's on his hat-trick ball. Took two wickets with the last two balls of his previous over. <coughs> well, he came in number five with the bat. But at the moment, he's number one with the ball. Three for 13 from his two overs. Well, the hat-trick ball just sails through to the keeper and the signal to wide. Well, it's gone from 22 for two to 33 for three. Well, it was 22 for three as well. Hand going much fuller with that delivery, but it slid down. The leg side, umpire signals it as another wide. Well, there is one big black cloud ahead of us, and it's the wind ahead of it that's bringing some precipitation to us. Good ball from hand. Donegan just holding the bat up, hand looking for the edge. Yeah, you can see a few brollies going up across the ground. I think it's going to be a brief shower. It's incredible that we're getting any cricket in and all. A lot of games across the province being called off to the heavy overnight rain. It's a credit to Dale McDonough and the team here at GM by choice. Do we have any cricket at all? Well, it means early morning starts for Dale. But by and large, he has done an absolutely fabulous job here. Immense amount of water fell last night. Oh. To add to the rain that fell during the week, we lost a day's play on Wednesday in the Interprovincial T20 Festival here in Pembroke. A day that saw the Northern Knights then capture that title. But at the moment, well, we've been quite lucky today, avoiding a lot of these showers. Short ball just taking the glove and going down the leg side. Yeah, it's starting to get heavier here. Wonder how the umpire's going to make a decision. I think everyone's looking at each other, just people appreciate it's gonna be a quick shower, but a lot of people scampering across the ground. Could well be one of them afternoons. As I say, we're lucky to, to have any bit of cricket. It seems to be easing back. But Brolly's going up, as I say, across the ground. One man who won't want to come off a rain. Well, that's few on hand with the way he's bowling. He's got three. Can he find a fourth? Lovely shot from McLaughlin Gavin. And just like that, it seems the rain has eased. Well, brief bit of rain. But the players haven't left the field. Fee on hand continuing. Flags over the pavilion, blowing straight down the ground. Northerly breeze today. The cloud bringing the precipitation seems to be moving off. And hand picks up a fourth. Well, McLaughlin Gavin. He tried to take on a ball that wasn't really there for him. 
As a result, all he could do was spoon it up to mid on. And the catch is taken. A fee on hand now, four wickets. Well, you would have thought, with an opening partnership of 204, that if Clontarf went on to win, man of the match would go to one of those two. But at the moment, Hand has the four wickets to fall and score just 36 now. Yeah, Clontarf are all over the hills. Dominant, almost on word go, having lost the toss. And a fourth wicket for Hand. And him and Clontarf are sensing blood. Well, new batsman comes out to the middle. Yeah, Delaney now. He'll be looking for a wicket as well. Get his name in on the act. Nathan Rooney joins Mark Donegan. Well, I wouldn't say it's rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, but the sight screen being moved. Delaney going round the wicket to the left-hander. Donegan now, he's only faced three deliveries. 36. <coughs> Runs on the board. Well, there's a slither of blue sky ahead. And that big black cloud seems to have just drifted off towards the west of the city. Well, that one nearly made it through Donegan's defences. Coming off the inside edge, just running back down the pitch. Yeah, here's the previous dismissal. Wow. Looking to pull that into the leg side, new straight away, as you often do. And Fionn Han knew. He's got four. The hills are on the ropes. Thirty-six for four. We're only in seventh over. As you can see there, with the blue sky to the right. Ah, oh, there it is. Delaney gets in on the act. Plantar for five. And. They're in full total cruise control. Donegan falls for one. That one just seemed to keep a little bit low. But it won't matter to Clontarf. They've it's got so one hand on the trophy. Certainly won't. They have half of the hillside back in the hutch with just 36 on the board. And still another 300 and eight required. <coughs> but no better sight for a fast bowler than seeing the stump cartwheeling out of the ground. Beautiful delivery, top of off stump, cartwheeling away, and that's the fifth wicket down. Well, Nathan Rooney comes in at number seven. Well, if they're to do it from here, the hills, there's about five, six, seven dozen people here. Well, if the hills do it from here, I suspect there'd be about 2,000 who will say they were here. Is there any way back for the hills from here? Yeah, just 36 for five. Feels like there's almost, as we say, the air has just been taken out of the wind, of the sail. Just everything seems to be going against the hills today. Well, Delaney's certainly reaching a good pace now. 
well into his task for the day. And I think with Clontarf, they'll think when they've got their best team out, well, they're probably one, they are probably the strongest team in the province. You could argue Pembroke as well. But I think we see Clontarf's strongest team more than we've seen Pembroke's strongest team over the last while, just with the availability of players and I suppose the decision of some players. But you think Clontarf lost to Warringstown. And obviously we wish Leinster all the best next Saturday in the Arcus Irish Senior Cup as they make a trip up to the lawn to play Warringstown who will be on home soil. But Warringstown are the dominant force again in the NCU. And Clontarf really had a chance to beat them in the Irish Cup. I feel like they should have beaten them. And all of a sudden the season takes on a different complex. So no doubt this will please them, getting all their big, big guns out firing. Delaney is really proving to be a handful. He may not have the number of wickets that Fionn Hand has picked up so far in this innings. But by goodness, he's bowling at some pace and causing all sorts of difficulties. That's the end of his fourth over. He's got one for 20. And the Hills, well, after seven overs, 37 for five. Brilliant piece of bowling again. Rooney Murphy just throws a hand at it and it did carry to Bob O'Farris. You'll see it on this angle. He'd be disappointed. At first slip, just almost didn't pick it. Didn't get low enough early enough. And he should have caught it. He'll be disappointed. You can see him there having a chat. But he definitely will feel like he should have taken that one. Yeah! Well, it doesn't matter because... Next ball, Fionn Han gets his five for. What a spell this is. Outstanding from Fionn Han. Well, the man from Fingal originally is destroying a Fingal side in the cup final. He's got five. The Hills are in all sorts of bother. And the Skellig 6 18 Senior Cup will be going the way of Clontarf. It's all but. Written on the trophy. Outstanding from hand. What a spell. Five for 17. Now, here's the delivery. Angled in, inside the bat. The gap between bat and pad just too large. And again, it's the off stump. Shows great bowling from both the Clontarf openers that they've both hit that off stump. And hand now, five for already. He's only into his fourth over. You'd think we were playing T20. Well, the thing is with these two, is they're a really exciting bowling partnership. We see bits of them for the Leinster Lightning together. I suppose the question mark now will be, can we see more of this at higher level? These two, Fionn Hand and David Delaney, they're still very young, certainly for international level, mid-20s. I think both will... I've struck up a really good relationship over the last couple of years since Hand has started playing for Clontarf. Might be something we see on the international stage in the coming years. Well, skipper Andy Kavanagh has come out to the middle now. There's no way he'd have been expected to have been out there batting. He's number eight and he's already out there in the power play. 38 for six, still another 306 required. They are an awful long way short. Two slips in place now, unsurprisingly. Clontarf perhaps smelling the blood in the water. <coughs> yeah, but it does look like the Skellig 618 Men's Senior Cup will be making the short trip across the East Link Bridge to Castle Avenue. Well, I wonder, does it have to pay the toll on its way? Because Clontarf have been absolutely outstanding all day. Again, when you think they lost a toss and everyone who was down here this morning and everyone who would have woken up would have realised it was a big toss to win. 
with the heavy overnight rain, with the wicket being undercover, but it hasn't mattered at Nyota. Well, cricket, it's a game that makes experts look like idiots. And sometimes it makes idiots look like experts. Well, sometimes it's not a bad thing to lose the toss because it would be interesting to ask Owen Delaney later. But if Clontarp had won the toss, well, you'd imagine they would have wanted the ball first. I know it's runs on the board in the cup final, but just with conditions in your favour, bowling-wise. Well, big appeal from behind the wicket. The bowler wasn't too interested. He joined in afterwards. But the end of another over. 39 for six now. Well, if it wasn't for all those little red dots on that screen, you'd say the hills are ahead of the run rate at the moment. But you can see those six dots absolutely making a mess of the hills innings. Well, there's only been three overs where a wicket hasn't fallen. Oh, that one went flying past the edge. Nathan Rooney in with his skipper now. Kevin is the one facing the bowling of a very fired up and very quick David Delaney. He knows how important this is for the Clums Half Club. Looking to join Phoenix on a number of wins at the top. Oh, what a super delivery that was. That one going over the top of off stump. Kavanagh playing inside the line of that one. It was only the length that saved him as it flew over the top of off stump. Well, I certainly hope our patrons, Cricket Leinster patrons, made it out from the lunch in time to see the start of this second innings. A wide signal by the umpire. Interestingly, though, Kavanagh still went after that one. Well, sometimes... Captain at sea is a joy, and other times it's a heavy responsibility, and that must be what Andy Kavanagh is feeling at the moment. His top order has come and gone. He's come in at number eight. Well, what a career Alan Delaney's had. When you think about it, we mentioned it earlier. The longevity, just outstanding. And then with the bat earlier, Vincent McAllister, and indeed yourself, alluded to that final in 2005 where these sides last met. He's the only sole survivor. Incredible. You think of the Irish Cup wins as well he's had. Outstanding. What I found strange was the last time these two sides met in the Leinster Senior Cup was back in 2013, 10 years since they've met in the Cup. On that occasion, Clontarf came out ahead by just seven runs. Second round game back in 2013. But yeah, as you say, Owen Delaney, he's certainly been there since the last time these two met in the final, 2005. Oh, good bouncer from Delaney. Yeah, that is quick from David Delaney when he bends his back. He's one of the quickest bowlers around. I mentioned that final. It was the Hills who won. Bryn Thomas made a wonderful century. They chased down 200 for victory. Back then it was the 60-over cup. 
What a team Clontarf had on the losing side. Alex Cusick, Jeremy Bray, who's the Hills coach, Tom Rigby, Bill Coughlin, Greg Mullins, Trent Johnson. And that'll be a boundary and a welcome one at that for the Hills. Extra pace from Delaney. Went searching with his final delivery of his fifth over. Andy Cavanagh gets off the mark and gets off the mark in good style. 45 for six after nine. Well, as far as runs are concerned, Hill's going along at quite a nice little pace. They're not letting that required run rate grow too much. It's up to just about 7.3. But it's the number of wickets. Fee on hand with a fifer in just his first four overs. Well, I tell you, if the Hills do win this, Man of the match will be quite an easy decision. But at the moment, it's looking like Clontarf's Cup. Played away to third man, just be a single. Plenty of support has made it down from Scaries today. See their team in the final. Disappointing day for them. Absolutely. As we said, it's a big crowd down. Especially when you're considering the rain we had overnight, the flooding in parts of Dublin would have been a difficult journey getting from Clontarf to here or indeed Scaries to here. Across the River Liffey. So spot flooding in Clontarf earlier. That's got signalled a wide. Umpire seemed to be considering his decision a fair bit there, but finally signals the wide. Gets the hills very much closer to that first 50 required. And just hiding the ball out by that blue line. Another dot ball. Just trying to frustrate the batsman at the moment. Well, one just played out on the offside. They get through for the single. No panic amongst the Clontar fielders. Well, Nathan Rooney, swing of the bat as it thuds into his pad outside leg stump. Not even a thought of an appeal. There was more of a cry of catch it than there was an appeal. Well, we may have to uh, get Jim Bennett in earlier than we thought, the way this has gone so far. Or we could wait till the end of the game and then just leave him a microphone. Well, hand searching for a six wicket. On this occasion, just a bit too full, punched away through the offside, runs out through the covers, goes for a boundary. That's the end of hands over. And that's 50 up in the 10th over. And the score now, 52 for six after 10. And as far as the runs scored concerned, the hills well, well ahead of where Clontarf were. But as we said in that first innings, the important thing for Clontarf was that there were no wickets down. The Hills can't say the same. Fee on hand, five for 25 from five overs. And a change of bowling sees David Delaney coming off at the nursery end. It's gonna be a real crunny, but a spin. See that full toss. So you can see what Hand is looking to do. Looking for that magic Yorker delivery. Good shot by Nathan Rooney. He's a good player. There's Rooney, an attacking batter. 
He's going to be ruling Cronje with his leg spin. What a smart move by Clontarf. They know that the hills are, well, if not behind the A ball, certainly covered by it. Leg spinner on now, encouraging Kavanagh perhaps to go for a few shots. Well, it'll be a frustrating place for both of these being out there in the middle, knowing that it's going to take a near miracle for victory. Two players will have a lot of pride there. They'll just want to get their side as close to that 100 mark. Nice delivery, bringing the batsman forward. Another one just pushed down towards the changing rooms. Fielder there, keeps it to a one. Captain Andy Kavanagh on strike. Well, he departs to catch behind the sticks, and that's the seventh wicket that falls with the score on just 54. Brilliant catch. Really is terrific glove work from PJ Moore. Always so difficult. It's what wicket keepers train so often for. Those outside edges when the bats are horizontal. And a really good catch. And as we said, the writing's on the wall. You can see Fionn Hand and Nathan Rooney having a few words in the background. The Hills now. The, this is all but lost. But Ruel Cronje gets in on the act. Really good catch. Watch the glove work here from PJ Moore. Beautiful stuff. Outside edge. Andy Kavanagh wasn't hanging around. As O'Malley Bay puts up the finger. The Hills are seven down. Well, superb keeping again. We saw Donegan with a fabulous stumping in the first innings. Now a really nice caught behind, standing up to the leg spinner. Seven down now, just 54 on the board. Only three wickets left. And Nolte comes in at number nine. Well, big swing of the bat. But that's the end of the leg spinners first over. Cronje, one wicket for just the concession of two runs. And the score now, well, 54 for seven. Well, there is the Hills card. And nobody from the Hills is going to enjoy reading that. Just too many early cheap wickets. One, one, zero, one. There's four of them with just two runs between them. And top score at the moment, McLaughlin Gavin. Fionn Han continuing now from the St. John's end. Starts with a wide. He won't be too upset about that. This is moving into his sixth over now. And he already has picked up the Pfeiffer. Well, a question for our viewers as well. Oh, this one is hit up in the air. Three saved. It was in the air a long time. No fielder in the vicinity while it was in the air. Yes, I mean, Clontarf have a few candidates for player of the match. Fionn Hand, five for 27. 
Let's rip the heart out of this reply. But then again, that opening stand of 204 has put Klontarf in a position where they could attack. Would you both be on hand through now? Yeah, I think so. It's going to be a tough task to get the ball out of his hands. He's got five wickets in the cup final. There's three more up for grabs. You know, fancy more. You get the feeling he'd bowl from both ends if he could at the moment. Well, it's good to see him in, in good form. He's obviously a huge asset, not just for Clontarf and the Leinster Lightning, but indeed Ireland going forward. And as I said, it is great to see him and David Delaney opening the bowling because at club level, it almost does feel like they're class above. Just the extra pace and control. Definitely something going forward. We maybe get to see them in the green of Ireland together. P particular David, I think a lot of people have wondered what's gone on in his career in the last two or three years. He's been in Australia, it seems to have done wonders to his game, particularly with the bat. But when he plays for Clontarf, he really is box office. I know Han will get the praise with five wickets, but Delaney as well. Well, you mentioned it earlier, how often bowlers do work in pairs. Going back through history, you often hear fast bowlers referred to in pairs. When you're going back a long way, Thompson and Lilly. fact, ironically, one of the only times in history you didn't talk about pairs was when the West Indies had a quartet. <laughs> they switched in and out. Fifty-nine for seven. Well, oh, that's a lovely shot. Took it on the full. Open the face, let it run out square on the offside. Four more onto the total. And Han finishes his sixth over. 63 for seven now. Yeah, again, last ball of the over is a loose one from Han. Happened the previous over. It happens again this over. Just over searching. And we just had a little conversation there with his captain. He may well just be finished for a spell and if he is what a spell it's been 5 for 34 well if there was any doubt at the halfway mark the game was pretty much over with that magic from Fuel Hand there he is searching for that full Yorker a good shot by Keane Nolte well put down at long on long off that's a great effort from David Delaney. Very difficult ball dipping on him. He seemed to be swerving left to right as well as dipping in front of him. Well, it is good to see Keir Nolte and Nathan Rooney meet you. Jim Bennett in earlier talking about the great Tom Murphy, who on Friday there's a commemoration game for in North County. What well, would be his 100th anniversary. And these two cousins grandsons of Tom Murphy wonderful famous cricketing name out in North County Dublin Fionn Hand does the fielding out in the boundary another single onto the total well, you get the feeling these two now have carte blanche to bat however they wish to. Well, they were 54 for seven. Come to the end of another over. 
can see again this chance, that ball moving all over the place. Delaney tried to get there. Just dipped in front of him. And yes, you were quite right. Feel on hand. His spell of six overs done for the moment. Somebody has managed to pry the ball out of his hand. Killian McDonnell now coming on at the St. John's end. There is the bowling card so far. Just those three bowlers used to date. And all three of them have made their mark in the wickets column. None more so than Fionn Hand. Five for 34. The Appreciation Society will be all over Twitter with this one now. 14 extras already. And there were just 20 extras in the first innings, 2021. Well, hopefully Nathan Rooney and Ken Nosey can entertain the crowd that's here with some big sixes. You'd imagine they'll try and take on Killian McDonald one one another bowler to just come on and dictate the game. As I said earlier, Nathan Rooney, a very attack-minded player, naturally fast scorer when he gets gone. So three in the deep leg side and deep long off as well. A nice length to start. They come through for the single. Yes, just as the Clonchaf middle order came in with carte blanche to go for anything they wanted with a big score on the board already. Well, one feels that these two Hills batsmen also have that same freedom but for totally different reasons. Seven wickets down. Donald slipping into his work straight away. That one rattles over the boundary into the wall. It's a nice shot. But such is the match situation that even such a nice shot like that doesn't really elicit any response from the Hill supporters. Yeah, it's extremely flat, really is, and it's disappointing. That's how been the brilliance of Clontarf today. Gets away with that one, McDonald. <clears throat> Dragged down, no one in the deep on the offside. Naughty will feel like he missed out there. But as I said, these two will be looking to just Give the Hills fans something to cheer about. Two local Fingal men. As I say, coming from great stock. One thing you always find with the Hills is the tremendous pride the players have in their club. They'll be as disappointed as any supporter at seeing how things are going for them in this game. It really, really is not the way they wanted it to not the way they wanted to perform in a final. Yeah, and I think that's what... Now, if you're the Hills, you'll worry about what are the legacies of this defeat. Like, it is, it is going to be a heavy defeat. That's the boundary in the previous over. So... Is this going to leave any lasting stars? Great work by John McNally. And they are going to run two. Good running in the end from Kia Nutty. But... They're in a precarious place in the league. They won't want to let this affect their league form. They've been near, nearly mended so far this season. All our Bob Kerr, our senior cup semi-finalists, finalists in the T20, losing finalists in the T20. Looks like they're going to be losing finalists here in the 50 over. And they won't want that league position where they are down near the bottom. As Fintan McAllister said earlier, with his Malahide side on top, it is so close. One match can swing things. But they want to not let this have lasting impacts for the remaining games in the season. Yeah, it's almost a game where you just have to shake it off. Say, bad day at the office. We've all had that. But on this occasion, it's a bad day at the office for the entire team. But also, it, it's one of those, sometimes, I'm sure a lot of the Hills players, and indeed Clontarf players, probably got in their heads 
everyone saw the weather forecast, everyone thought we weren't going to get any cricket, and then it just seems to have magically, thanks to the hard work of GM by Choice, Adele McDonough, that we've got out here. But sometimes you're just focus can shift a little bit. And look, it's not an, ex an excuse, and I'm sure it's not one the hills will use, but sometimes things like that can just happen. But as I said, Clontarp be magnificent. Well, you feel that the players would have been watching the weather forecast as keenly as we were, and they would have thought that, ah, look, this isn't going to happen on Saturday. We'll be back on Sunday, and we'll take it from there. But since then, well, the Hills won the toss, and that's about all they have won at today. Clontarf have dominated this game from start to finish, apart from losing the toss. Well... Sometimes the toss is vital. We thought it would have been today. It would have been a very good toss to win. But as it turns out, Clontarf be happy at having lost it. Well, that's what the crowd want to see now. Some attacking shots from the Hills batsman. Superb shot. Nathan Rooney, as I say. He is a joy to watch when he gets going. Can't score really quickly. That's good delivery from Killian McDonald. Great comeback. Very clever bowler. But as I said, if you're Nathan Rooney and Keen Nutt, you just want to take this as long as possible. Yes, the game could well be out of sight, but give yourself something to think and to cheer about. Clever again from Killian McDonald. Saw Rooney shuffling leg side or offside, looking to target the leg side. Well, this time, goes down on one knee, pulls it round the corner, four runs. Good over for the Hills. And there haven't been too many times we could say that today. Yeah, really good again from Rooney. Just helping the ball back with a square. And the other thing about having the two spinners on at the moment is that Clontarf getting through those overs quite quickly. Our cameraman and director pointing out quite rightly that Clontarf will want to get 20 overs on the board as soon as possible, just in case there is more rain. You can see in the far distance off to the north, north west there's a big bank of cloud that we're hoping is just going to slide the other side of the dart line. But I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some rain between now and the end of this game, no matter how many overs it goes. Well, we said we wanted some entertainment for the crowd, and that's the sort of shot that will do it. Nathan Rooney reverse hoiking that. I don't think there's any other name for that shot. And it runs away for four. Yeah, terrific from Nathan Rooney. It's just hand-eye coordination. It's pure hand-eye coordination, this shot. You can see he's just going to go out and enjoy himself. And why shouldn't he? Team are in a difficult position, not being their day. I'd like to remind everyone in the Leinster game about his ability. What better day to do it than... A cup final day. Very clear and concise not out from the umpire. The bowler finally drags himself off his knee. Probably judged by the umpire to be going down the leg side. Well, he gets him with the very next ball. And that's another wicket. Killian McDonald joins the wicket takers. Oh, sorry, my apologies, of course. It's Cronier picking up his second. Another wicket falls. Well, shots like this that 
added to the partnership. Largest partnership of this inning so far. They put on 35 for the eighth wicket. Well, eight down now, just 89 on the board. The Hills facing another 255 for victory. The run rate hasn't really increased. They've been doing well there. But on this time, well, no footwork. The length did him. Swing of the bat. The ball getting past it. And Cronia now two for 13. Just two balls remaining in this. The 14th over. Sight screen being moved. Just two wickets away from lifting the cup now, Klontarf. Cronia, two for 13 in his fourth over. Fee on hand, though. He's the story of this second innings. As McNichol punches that one up the ground, takes his single. And that ends the over with the score on 90 for eight. Yeah, thank you, Craig. We're going to have a change in the commentary box. And I must say, we've got former Cricket Leinster president Jim Bennett alongside us. You kind of trudged over, Jim. It's not been the hills this day. No, Sean, I wasn't in any great hurry to get over here, I must say. And in a tough day. I mean, and now in fairness, Clontarf have batted very, very well. And the bowling has been very good. Fionn Hand was very good. David good from the other end of Crony. So, you know... Um, when, you're, when your main man is out caught and bowled in the first over, you have a sense that it's not going to be your day, you know. And then Nikolai out very quickly as well. So Clontarf, I've been outplayed on the day. We've been outplayed on the day by a very good Clontarf team. Oh, there's five bonus runs. Yeah, yeah at least we're going to get the 100. <laughs> For the hills, well, it's down the leg side. Fionn Hand was exceptional, wasn't he? Fantastic. Fantastic. Him and David Delaney both... Both, both draw very well and... We're hitting the stumps. We we weren't beating the bat, so they were they were, they were tremendous to do it. And a big crowd down. How was the cricket Leinster patrons lunch? It was lovely. Rack of lamb and uh, I, can't, I think the other was some kind of a pear thing. But it was very very nice. And of course the sponsors Schellig were providing gin which I don't drink, but there was a lot of people imbibed as well. So it was very, very pleasant. And they, they, I left the bones, because one of our lads at one year ate bones and everything. But I, I, I knew that you weren't supposed to. But the racket was lovely, beautiful, uh, very well served, very efficient. So we'll be back for more. Yeah, one of the great days in the Cricket Leinster calendar, the Skellig 6-18 men Senior Cup final between Clontarf and the Hills. And it looks as if... The trophy will be making its way over the East Link Bridge and up towards Castle Avenue. Might have to watch itself over the floods. Yeah, so, so I believe. I oh, know it's welcome to no, Clontarf. Been very good and interesting enough. I talked to David Lennon during the week. Clontarf had never beaten the Hills in a final up to today. Um, you know, we've won T20s against them and, and so. But uh, the, today uh, we have to bow to the, to the better team. Just the five wides and the single in that over. 18 overs gone and the Hills approaching the century. 96 for eight. And a good crowd down gym. People from all clubs when great, they walk down the walk. And it's a very, very sociable day. It's lovely to have a chat with people. And, you know, and you have plenty of time in 50 overs as well to, you know, to get around and get it, have a chat and very nicely supported. No, it's a great day. I've been very well organised by the Cricket Leinster staff and so on. So it's a... Uh, it's it, and ground has been fantastic. Yeah, we must give a big mention to GM by choice, led by Dale McDonough. And you think about the rainfall, not just overnight, but indeed over the last month or so in Ireland, in the province. 
It's incredible that we're going to get a full day's cricket. Day, yeah, and, and the drainage appears to be superb. You know, no water on the ground in the outfield. It's lovely. In the air, I'm not quite carrying it. Tom Delaney. Keen Nolte bowled well at the death. Bowled well, bowled well and kept at it. And kept at it, you know, it's hard it's hard when you're getting tap, you know, to, to keep at it. Bowled very well, you know, it but it just it's just it's one of those things we we weren't beating the bat, we weren't actually making chances. You know, when when the opening pair put on a big score, everyone then is on the back foot to to you know and it's very hard it's very hard to bring pressure to bear when there's no wickets have fallen. Ian Nolte on 14. Just looking to guide his side through as many of the remaining overs as possible. And we'll get four. Runs. And that brings the hills past 100. Uh, yeah, we were afraid for a while, I think, when we balled out Phoenix a few years ago, that that was the lowest score in a final. But we were kind of afraid that we were going to get that accolade today. So at least we're going over 100 now. Yeah, 100 for one. 101 for eight in the 19th, at the end of 19. That was the famous day with Naz Shokat taking... Yes, that's right. That's right. He got six or seven wickets that day. At least. And it was, it was magnificent. Wonderful player, Naz Shokat. Yeah. Now, Killian McDonald will continue. Andrew Pointer does well. Backward point. And there it is. There's the ninth wicket. Killian McDonald gets in on the act as well. And Clontarf are just one wicket away from victory. And another wicket falls. Yeah, it's very hard to say. I'm speechless. It's very hard it's very hard to say anything. Well, Clontarf have been absolutely magnificent. They're on the cusp of another win, another senior cup win here in Cricket Leinster. Oh, a famous win for them, and they've been great. You know, you can't, you, you have to, every so often when you're well beaten, you just acknowledge it, recognise it, and congratulate them and say, there'll be another day in the Gael Beg Loyal Egan Yeah, a bit of turn from Killian MacDonald. Well, these two have been two of the most successful sides in this competition since the turn of the millennium. Clontarf, this will be their 15th win in the Senior Cup. Join Phoenix on that mark. Yeah, we won our first one in 89. Uh, and then 2005 beat Clontarf, 2006 beat North County. And then some in the, the new century as well. Two wins in the new century. So that's, 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 that's our lot. But I'm afraid 2023 is not going to be one of those years. But uh, we accept that. You might just remind listeners who might have missed earlier about Tom Murphy and the day that's planned that's right, next it's a Friday. That's commemorative event, um, 100 ball, uh, to recognise and to, to celebrate what would have been Tom's 100th birthday. Uh, his son, Joe, and the family are organising a day. I don't know who's actually playing, but I know it's a five o'clock event. Uh, I've talked to Audrey, who would be married to Thomas, one of the sons, and uh, they're looking forward to a great day. And a great, great Fingal occasion, because the, the strength of Fingal cricket has consistently been in the families, you know, you, you recognise the different families have contributed so much, you know. Mightn't be contributing much today, but that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's an occupational hazard, you know. Uh, that's more wide. More Look. wide, yeah. Bonus runs for the hills. But as you mentioned, three, oh, indeed, it was leg bite signalled yeah. by the umpire. As you mentioned earlier, three of Tom's... Grandchildren. Grandchildren yes. playing here today. A so it just shows you. Tomas, Tomas Rooney Murphy... Keen Nulty and Nathan Rooney, which is it's it's lovely. It's you know another generation very involved in cricket. 
Thomas looks after our ground. Audrey is here, great supporter. And all the family, uh, Anna or Angela, you know, they've all, all of the families, you know, it's what keeps cricket going in the hills or in Fingal in general. And I mean, it'll be a great night in Inch, North County's ground on, on Friday. Absolutely, and all welcome. From well, everybody welcome. We look forward to as many people as possible to celebrate a great occasion. Absolutely. I'll be the, down in North County on Friday night coming. A wonderful celebration of all things Fingal cricket. And in the air. And just short. So it's going to land safe. But the hills, although it's not been their day today, they've had got to the final of the T20 All-Ireland semi-final yes. and it's important now they don't let this affect their league form Oh big time Sean because I'm afraid we've had a series a number of defeats in the last while and we're playing Clontarf on tomorrow week it's our last away game after that we've run a home games but we really need to get back to get back on ball or, or we'll be looking at um, Championship Cricket next year well, Bobo Forrest, a very difficult chance. Could have been a, ca could have been a catch. He may have hurt his hand. Well, he won't like me saying it, but that may be the second one. Very difficult chance. Always difficult at first slip. When well, someone's looking to play quickly, the yes, cut uh, shot. Yeah, yeah. But four more for the Hills. Hales move on to 108 now for nine. Jonathan Tall and Keen Nolte. In the air. And just short of Andrew Pointer. Brilliant effort, chance for a run out. And there it is. And that's the end of that. That's well, it. Congratulations to Clontarf. Very, very well deserved. That's it. Nothing more that can be said. Well, outstanding from the Hills. Or rather from Clontarf they are the champions it's as convincing a win as you'll ever likely to see led brilliantly by their captain Owen Delaney Ryan Karuna ran outstanding making a century as that 200 round stand opening partnership bit of late order hitting from David Delaney and PJ Moore got them up over 340 and then Fionn Hand was brilliant with the ball and backed up by Cronier, Delaney and MacDonald. And it's Clontarf's day. They are the Skellig 618 Men's Senior Cup champions for the 15th time. They joined Phoenix as the most successful side in the competition's history. And what a win. Brilliant. Wonderful piece of fielding by one of the old timers, Andrew Pointer. Kian Nolte run out. And Clontarf are the champions. Well, it was a final, and it was a different final to what we're used to as the sides leave the pitch. And you see that final run out. Kian Nolte unable to make his ground after the fine throw and fielding by Andrew Pointer. Two teams shaking hands. Well, that would be a very disappointed Hill side. Not just because they lost, but the manner in which they lost. All out for 108. It's a 235 vict run victory with 29.1 overs remaining. Well, they allowed Clontarf to get off to a great start. The Hills won the toss, inserted Clontarf, and certainly weren't expecting Clontarf then to put on an opening stand of 204. And that was the basis of this victory. There is the Clontarf card from the first innings. They were put into bat by the Hills, and Owen Delaney leading from the front with 88, but it was Karun Karan with 105 from just 109. 
and their opening partnership of 204 before they both fell quite quickly. PJ Moore, well, he showed his class. 47 from just 25 deliveries, and David Delaney with the same sort of freedom, 44 from just 36. Fee on hand, Bob Forrest, Cronier, well, they all came in searching for very quick runs. They didn't need them. 343 for seven, 21 extras in that first innings. And the Hills, well, damn guard, he took three for 70. And Kean Nolte, he took two for 49. And the only other wicket taker, Andrew Kavanagh, the captain, he came on with his leg spin and one for 25. Well, in reply, the Hills won't want to look too often at this scorecard. McLaughlin Gavin, well, he tried to give his side the start they needed, but it was wickets falling around him. Cummins, Lotita, Damgard, Donegan, all falling quickly and all falling. Well, fee on hand, he's had the day. A final that you dream of. Keon Nolte was the top, well, second top scorer. Nathan Rooney got 26. And here's the bowling figures. Just the four bowlers used, just the four bowlers needed. They took nine of the wickets, and then the last one falling to a run out from Andrew Pointer, firing the ball down to the keeper. And Keon Nolte was found short of his ground. Fee on hand, obviously. The pick of the bowlers, five for 34 from just six overs. Delaney, well, he was fast and he was accurate. He was the ideal foil for hand. The two of them together, well, they reduced the hills to a point whereby victory was a forlorn hope before the two spinners came on and between them, well, they finished it all off. 20 extras in just those 20 overs. 108 all out, and they scored at a decent run rate, but it was never enough, and those wickets falling. So there you have it. Klontoff are the Skellig 618 Senior Cup winners, and they seem to have done it just before the rain's about to arrive. Well, 235 run victory. That is a massive win on any sort of game. But in a cup final, well, there'll be celebrations tonight in the bull ring on the north side. Castle Avenue will be buzzing this evening. Well, we weren't expecting to get this game played today. The weather forecasts all suggested that we would be coming back here tomorrow. It's not to be the case. 70 overs we've seen today, well, nearly 71. And we have seen 451 runs, but the majority of them scored by Clontarf. Well, everybody's getting ready for the presentation in front of the clubhouse now. And I think our director will show you the highlights of this match. 235 runs. Well, nobody was expecting that. I don't think anybody had that in the sweepstake today. President of Clontarf, Susan Bray, she's been here since first thing this morning. She'll be delighted to see her club picking up the silverware. And a fabulous, fabulous win. Well, here we'll show you the highlights now of this game. That was the first boundary of the day. We thought that, well, he was lucky to get away with that one. How the game could have changed from there on. But these two, well, they put the ball to all parts and they set down such a good base for the rest of the innings. At 20 overs, they'd reached 94, but then they started to accelerate and nothing the Hills could do to stop it. Well, that one was going over the top. And then the next one goes away for a boundary. Really was a tough day in the field for the Hills. Andy Kavanagh, well, he tried shuffling his pack. He tried all seven bowlers, even bringing himself on for four overs. He picked up a wicket. 
But these first 36 overs, well, they belong to the Clontarf openers. Super shots, super play. And they have done an absolutely fabulous job for their side and for their club. Just boundary after boundary. These are all the replays we showed you during the match. And you can just see how cleanly the Clontarf openers were hitting at this stage. There weren't too many sixes. They played sensibly. They played for the gaps. Andy Kavanagh, well, he felt a bit of frustration at just missing that one. But look at that. Absolutely classic shot, just driven down to long arm. No fielder there. Another four. You could see the clouds in the background. We were fortunate to get away with this one. But get away with it, we did. That one played across to the tents. You can hear in the background the applause of the presentation. And again, we just see time and time again the ball crossing the boundary. And the hills, well, they're on the back foot from a very early stage. Good crowd here today. Always helps with the patrons' lunch. And I'm sure the sponsor's product front and centre. And now we've reached the stage of this innings whereby the Clontarf batsmen had the freedom to play their shots. Lovely reverse lap there, just beating the fielder. Mixed with the, the sheer power and strength. Nice moment in the game there. The attempted catch denied straight away. Well, Rooney Murphy, well, he might stand there with the teapot, the sugar bowl, whatever you want to call it. Luck just wasn't on his side today. The inside edge beating the stumps. And it just didn't stem the amount of boundaries that were being hit. This one just down the leg side. Nothing Donegan could do about that. Rooney Murphy again. Well, this is going to hurt the Hills players. As Sean was saying earlier, well, they reached the semi-final of the All-Ireland. They reached the final of the T20. The league not quite going their way at the moment. And I don't think they'll let this result affect them too much. They'll just put this one down as a bad day in the office. They know... They're a lot closer to Clontarf in terms of talent and ability than 235 runs, which was the eventual winning margin. And there is the player of the match celebrating his century. And even after the century was scored, these two continued on until... Captain Owen Delaney just lifted one to the fielder. And finally, the first wicket fell with 204 on the board. You can see here, he's just got too far underneath that one. The fielder comes in from the boundary, takes a low, comfortable catch, keeps the ball off the ground. And that was the first wicket to fall. One of seven that fell in the first innings. There is an absolutely smart piece of keeping by Mark Donegan showing why he is so highly rated, not only in the hills, but also by the Leinster Lightning. But all that did was bring Delaney and Moore to the wicket. And they just provided a bit of acceleration for Clontarf. Looking to go big whenever they could. And with 200 on the board from the openers, these two certainly had the freedom to play the way they wanted to. Joyous occasion in a final to have that sort of freedom. As ball after ball disappeared out towards the boundary. A 
Hills really left struggling today, whether it be with ball in hand or bat in hand. It's been a tough, tough day for the Hills. Well, as we said, we've managed to beat the weather forecast. We've managed to beat the weather and get a full game in. Freedom to play these laps and reverse shots as well as using the power and going straight down. That one came off the sight screen. And then this is how Damgaard picked up his wicket. Caught and bowled. Batsman just making sure the catch was taken. But as soon as he hit it, he knew bottom hand came off the bat as he started heading back to the pavilion. As Nikolai Damsgaard took the court and bowled. It didn't slow the momentum of the Clontarf innings at all. Loss of wickets were just taken in their stride. It just meant that the next batsman would come out and have the same freedom. Fee on hand, well, he added invention and power. And a nice little cameo of an innings for him. Little did he know that it was only going to be a foretaste of the best part of his day. Another beautiful straight shot. Another one that just disappears into the fielder's hands on this occasion. Got the nice swing of the bat, didn't quite get enough on it, and the fielder coming round took a smart catch. Kian Nolte, well, if there was a player of the match for the Hills, it would have been him. Best of the bowlers. Clean fielding in the field. Nolte had a good day, but the one man couldn't do anything about it. This one careering into the pads before finding middle stump. And at this stage, it was just about how many would Clontarf reach. The answer was to be 243 for seven. And that's a lovely, lovely delivery. Andy Kavanagh. But there were still some more runs to be scored. As Clontarf sought to maximize the runs that the Hills would have to get. And chasing such a mammoth total, well, it ended up putting a huge amount of pressure on the Hills batsman. And the quality of the bowling was such. There's the final run out. The irony. Both sides suffering a run out today. And you see the Clontarf players now going up to collect their medals at the pavilion as we continue to watch just how well Clontarf had done. Well, the Hills then came into bat and it all started with that shot. Murray Cummins, one sticking in the pitch and all he could do was pat it back to feet on hand. And that was the start of his Pfeiffer. He'll be delighted with his performance today with bat and ball. It's not often you take a Pfeiffer and score runs in a cup final and you're still not man of the match. But it was that 100 by the opener. Karun Akaram. That LBW, well... 
We were right in line there. And I think many of us on commentary or many of you watching would have given that one out. Pitched outside off, hit him in line and was going on to hit the stumps about two thirds of the way up and possibly middle, middle and off. Fee on hand then continued. Chopped on. Never got a chance to get going. Very next ball that was. Two in two. He had to wait for his hat trick ball. And it wasn't to be. And then Delaney. Well, he really wanted to get in on the act. Seeing five wickets falling at the other end. This one just paddled away, fielded by my co-commentator. Yes, it was the hat-trick ball, and it wasn't to be, but it didn't take too long before another one was scooped up in the air. Everyone waited to see the result, and the batsman started that long trudge back to the pavilion, and wickets were just falling with too much regularity. Falling, it seemed, almost every over. And then Delaney, well, that to me, beautiful to watch. Wicketkeeper picking up the bail, but it's that stump cartwheeling out of the ground. Always great to see from a fast bowler. This one edged Robert Forrest in at first slip, and it was just... Slightly too low for him. He tried to keep it up. Wasn't to be. And then Hand came in, taking the off stump again. And that was what was so impressive with the Clontarf openers, was how they were attacking that off stump. Batsman knew they had to play. And the wickets just kept tumbling. There was a stand towards the end. Stand of 35, but it was never enough. The only thing, as Jim Bennett said, was the Hills did manage to get over 100. But even when the lower order batsmen were scoring runs, there was just so little behind it. Super catch by the keeper. To see that control with the gloves, getting the upper body out of the way, leaving the gloves to do the work. And that was Hans last over. We just seem to be stretching a bit to try and take a sixth wicket. But then the spinners came on, and although they received a bit of tap at some stage, and they were unlucky with that one, between the two of them, McDonnell and Cronier picked up three of the last four wickets to fall. As the Hills limped. Limped with one hand tied behind their back to 108. And it was just the 21st over that saw the innings wrapped up. Well, you've seen 70 overs of play today. You've seen 450 runs in just 71 overs. A full game, a full game of entertainment One last hurrah, beating the field up, running away to the boundary. That one has just come back in and hits the off stump. A 
another one for Bob Forrest. Didn't quite have his catching gloves on today. Two very difficult chances for him. And let's be honest, it made no difference to the result in the end. This one was played out. Andrew Pointer went for the catch, went to stop the ball, and then quickly picked up, got it down to the bowler's end, uh, to keeper's end, and the bales were whipped off. And that ended the match. Well, the non-striker was slow to take off, Nolte. Not everything goes to plan. Well, the Hills will know that feeling. Not everything goes to plan. Good crowd outside the pavilion. We'd like to thank Cricket Leinster for their organisation of this game. We'd like to thank uh, Clontarf and the Hills. Clontarf, well-deserved winners of the Skellige 618 Men's Senior Cup Final. Love to thank also today's caterers, Bavna, and Philip, of course, will be in the bar. We'd like to thank Pembroke for their use of the facilities today. And what great use at all. And what a great choice as well. Pembroke seems to be, well, if not rain free, not far off it. Your chair. Philip's got your chair, taking it back to the bar. So thank you very much to all concerned. The Leinster Senior Cup is completed for another year. Clontarf now joint with Phoenix with 15 wins. At the top of that, this cup, of course, has been going since 1935. And now Clontarf having been runners up last year, this year, write their name on the trophy. So thank you very much to all of you who tuned in, to Niall Walsh and all involved with the streaming service here at Pembroke and to my co-commentators today, Sean Hussey, Fintan McAllister and our guest summariser today, Jim Bennett. Always entertaining to hear Jim on the mic. Thank you very much for tuning in. And at this stage, I will say thank you and good night. And just remember, that on Monday you can tune in again on the Cricket Leinster website and you will see the women's finals both on Monday, the minor and the senior cup, Pembroke and Merion in the senior cup and Clontarf thirds and Rush seconds in the minor cup final. The minor cup final will begin at 12 noon, weather permitting, and four o'clock on Bank Holiday Monday, we hope you will join us either here on the ground or on your various devices watching the Women's Sprint Senior Cup Final here in Sydney Parade. Thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed that game and this presentation.